G'day everybody and welcome back for some more ACS modding building shenanigans. The reason I wanted to do this today instead of doing the scrapyard stuff like I've been doing the last two weeks is because as part of assertive, uh, the Assertive Acquisition series, TFE and I have reached the point where the bases were supposed to be sending drones to our home base while we were there without us doing much. But it hasn't quite worked, which means I wanted to come up with a better way of doing things. I wanted to come up with a more interesting way of engaging with the drones and the bases and give you a reason for going out and hunting down specific bases as one option. And so what I want to do is take the behavior from what it is currently where over time, once you reach a certain negative standing threshold, the bases will turn from peace mode, where they will only trigger and send drones after you once you get within, say, three kilometers or something around that mark, to where they would switch. And periodically, over, over the time where they were able to, they would send drones to attack you from up to 14 kilometers away. Now, that hasn't worked, <laughs> and I don't even know if it was the best way of doing things. I've started to think that maybe a better way of doing things would be to have a specific type of base be able to spawn once you'd annoyed assert enough, and that specific base will send a whole swarm of drones to attack you periodically until you destroy it. Which gives you a very specific goal and we could probably make that base something that has the thruster loot. So it's not only do you get the benefit of these things stop attacking my home, but you also get the benefit of I might get a fancy thruster. And I think I think that might be a more interesting way to engage with the bases. Because at the moment, the bases... They're... They could use a little bit of love. And thanks so much, Moosey, for a year. Thanks, KB, for 15 months. Thank you, Jackson, for almost three years. And thank you for being a moderator for a good chunk of that. Uh, thanks Taz41344 for the Prime Sub, and thanks Tedian for the Prime Sub. Um, so, the other day when I was thinking about this, I started thinking about what I could do as a base for this concept. And I began building this. I started out with wanting to do large round pillars, and then the scale got a little bit out of control <laughs> to be quite frank. Um, and I ended up with this. The idea that I wanted to have for this particular base um, will, was that it would look like it was for building and launching drones. So this is the sort of landing pad launch area. And then through here is the drone printer. Now, obviously, I didn't want to use an actual thing that looked like that could print stuff. I just wanted to make something that looked like it. So the conveyor pipes and a set of welders seemed to do that job quite nicely. The trouble is, as soon as you do that, you end up with a very large box. So it was at that point I got distracted by something else and figured I'd do this on stream. Thanks, Mr. Roberto. Thanks for the prime sub. See you, Moosey. So, I was talking to some people who know Space Engineers very, very, very well and still play the game just in survival for fun. Kind of similar to myself, really. And one of the concepts for this base that I think should add some real interest to it is I plan on making these waves spawn very randomly as in the time period between the spawns that I'm currently 
thinking is going to be best is anywhere between 10 minutes and either three or four hours. So it's possible, if you get unlucky, that you could get smashed a few times in a row and then be left alone for ages. Or you could just be left alone for ages in between each one. Um, because I think that will create much more interesting moments. Because sometimes these bases will be easy and sometimes they will be incredibly tough. The other thing that I want to do with these bases is for the spawns that happen once you're close to it, I want to see if we can do something clever and have and be really, really specific about the spawn location of the drones and have them actually spawn on this launch way. But that's, that's like, the challenging part. Although I don't think that's that challenging once I get the offsets right. As long as the drones' offsets are pretty good, they should just be able to just look like they're shooting straight from here. Uh, and that, that should make an assault against this really interesting because you're going to be fighting off a lot of drones. Um, I want this to be a tough base to capture or destroy, and I want it to be something that's a memorable engagement. Uh, not really, Taz. There's no, there's no way to adjust the trigger, the triggered spawns based on how much of the enemy, as in the player, has lost stuff. Um... At least none that I can think of that would be reliable enough to put into practice. But the thing is, if you get smashed by ACS... Dumb dog. If you get smashed by ACS with a few drones, there is a very low probability that you will get smashed again without having a few hours to rebuild. So, it should balance out. Um, yeah, TDN, the research bases are non-hostile. So, that's how it's supposed to work. They're supposed to spawn close to you when you're on a planet. Can we make the welders to each side? Um, yeah. I was just trying to think about how I could... Um, do something tricky with this base as well. What I was contemplating, especially after having um, now captured a, well, attacked a few of these facilities with CFE, I was thinking about having some projected weaponry um, that only comes into existence once the player is close to the base. Um, but haven't thought about how to do that in a nice way while also getting ammunition to said weapons. Um, yeah, using beams and stuff and using plate instead of this full block on top. What I thought I'd do was try and build these sort of staff slash crew areas on each side. Um, and then see how much space I really wanted beyond that. Uh, recessed guns on pistons, no, because I don't like adding too many subgrids to these things. And recessed guns on pistons won't stop a turret, which is automatically set to target turrets, or weapons, from hitting it. The idea of the projected things is that it's only going to trigger the welders on when you are very, very close, meaning that your own guns will shoot you. So it'll add a little bit of extra challenge. But I think I think I'll stick with this one being straightforward for now and contemplate that later. Uh, as it does seem like an idea that could be fraught with all sorts of overpowered response from the, <laughs> from the uh, base. And could end up kind of being a, doing a bit too much. So this was kind of the idea I had. For the launch area, 
with... Oh, actually, that could work nicely if I slope this down toward the front. My, oh, I need a new mouse so badly. I was complaining about this during Wrong Way Up. I really do need to get off my butt and sort that out. Um, because my mouse wheel is not working reliably. So what I was just thinking is we could do... Something with the windows and slopes at the front. I do need to think about getting enough weapons on this as well. Possibly something with long range. Not that the AI can really use it though. Just a waste of disappointment. Um, no, I'm not going to bother replacing the parts inside my mouse, no. Uh, that, that seems like something that would take a lot of my time and would be better done by someone who knows what they're doing. <laughs> and me. Much, much as I am nor, like, much as I would like to do some of those things sometimes, I... I'm also very aware that that's just very cons it's a very time consuming way to do things. Um I don't actually remember how much this mouse was. I think it was $90 or something. I actually did... Oh, no, wait. I did order a replacement of this mouse at one point. I don't like this. Um, I did order a mouse replacement. Trouble was, the company that I ordered it from is terrible and didn't actually fulfill my order or even give me any notification of my order being fulfilled for weeks. And so I requested a refund because they were useless. And I will no longer attempt to purchase things from them. No. Let's go square on the bottom level, I think. We can do a slope on the next one. Uh, glad you're liking the mod so far, PM Nutrition. Uh, Canada, there's a way to do it with fixed weaponry. There's no way to do it with turreted weaponry. Uh, the range. Because Lucas's targeting mechanics use the full range of weaponry, whereas the vanilla one does not. I really don't know what to do with this base. It's bugging me. No, it's too early for colour. Way too early for colour. I'm just trying to think about what, what I want to do in terms of... Um, space and stuff. So... This base... And many of the others have, like... Crew areas... With... Maybe I should start with the dormitory and then move from there. That could work. Uh, I I always like to build in a neutral tone because that way you are left with making things interesting just with shape alone, not with colour, and then adding colour as a last stage. Uh, I find it makes my shape of building a lot more interesting uh, than if I was building with colour from the outset. That's my preferred way of doing things. So we've got a way to run out onto the the launch deck. We need an access way to the uh, where's doors? Access way to the building area. So I guess on the ground floor which, well on the first floor, whatever you want to call this um, 
of this base, we should have, like, construction areas, I guess. Where we can have little labs and little things for people to work on their new drone designs and that sort of thing. I think that could be a place to start. So perhaps on both sides we do that sort of thing. And then the next next level up is the living space and crew quarters and all that sort of stuff. That is probably going to help me get this started. Uh, so... What sort of things can we do for production area? We can have like some tables set out. And then put some shelving up with gear around it. Rotation's all weird with those. And then we can put a lab table, I guess, down the end. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was thinking we can have, like, workshop and then maybe use... Maybe have the projector table and some um, programming suite sort of looking things down one end. Um, Yanis, I've actually got tutorials on numerous of those topics already. Um, uh, I wasn't going to put a blueprint on the, on the projector though. There are performance reasons for not doing that. that hopefully King will fix at some point, but at this stage, uh, having projector tables active causes performance issues. Uh, where's the projector block on here? I got one somewhere? I don't think I do. Yeah, LCD with a static image is much better, and so I've and when we've got the um, blueprint images. Like, if we go projection area, text and images. Like so. Except that's the one that looks like a jump drive, so what's the other one? Yeah, didn't mean to press that. Yeah, that's better. That's more drony. Um. But yeah, Yanis, on the topic of uh, respawn ships, as part of the, as part of my ongoing development of um the scrapyard mod I will be looking into how to do respawn ships and so that'll be something that I also plan to cover soon I really wish we had tables with stuff on them would be so much better but I think this sells the idea well enough by having the labs and whatnot then I need to have some computers down here which means programmable blocks which I saw on here just before there we go Huh. Just thought, I wonder if there's a way to change the ownership of a, um, 
lock using MES. Uh, okay, this is going to get infuriating. Uh, no, there is no sci-fi programming programmable block yet. Hopefully, we will get one eventually. Um, some new skins for these would be nice. I think that'll. I think this will work well enough as a bit of a crew area, and I've left enough blocks clear that we can get lighting in here. Uh, now it's just about managing the outside and making sure it looks right. Oh yeah, it's going to be a fight with this mouse today. It's gotten so much worse. It wasn't too bad and then it just got really bad on in the past week. Do you think that will ever put in a smaller large grid antenna? Maybe? Not absolutely convinced they will, but maybe. <laughs> kind of had a lot of things that uh, we wouldn't have expected them to even a few years ago. So, who knows? Uh, I'm obviously going to have to repaint these or reskin them so that they're not all the same armor block, but I'm just going to leave them as is for the moment. Just to get an idea of whether the windows work in the placement that I'm thinking of using them. Uh, you know what? Let's not do that. Let's do that. So I think that'll look better from the inside. Yeah. Wish the dish was a variant of the laser antenna, then we could have had them point at the target, which is a which is one antenna like that is supposed to do. Yeah, from a gameplay perspective, I can understand why they might why they didn't do that because then we would have had to have a single block with a enormous collision like this that was mobile. Um, if they'd made it like a laser antenna, because laser antenna head actually points where it's meant to go. So this would have to be a sub part of a turret style block, which would make its collision truly massive um, and make it very difficult to place. Uh, not saying it would have been impossible, but I can kind of understand why that might not have been their first choice of ways to go about it. How does this feel from inside? Yeah. Then I'm thinking uh, do these help me here? Don't think they do. I'm thinking I'll have a full armor block in between the levels. No, they don't. Alright, so we'll have to go with that. Um, which should give me the ability to use a few half blocks in the roof here so that it's not all just at the two and a half meter height. Uh, this thing's going to be sort of airtight. Um, I plan on at least temporarily using it as the moon, as a moon option. I guess the moon alternative, I could just get rid of these doors because then the airlock is the drone printer bay. Ostensibly. Um, but for the pla normal planetary version, it can have a door there. That's one possibility. The other option, I guess, would be to do something like this. Eh, eh, eh.
and have an airlock in the wall like that. Which gives us a pretty clean airlock. Actually, that's not bad. I might do that. I might do that. <laughs> It's not the best looking airlock, but it is a nice clean one that fits neatly in spaces like this. Just gives you a nice way of not needing that extra depth in your wall. You can, If you've got a full thickness wall, you can easily slap an airlock like that in. Um, exactly, Existence. That's why I tag my stream with backseating allowed. But I also added a new one this morning. Because <laughs> it seemed appropriate. Felt right. Uh, let's do let's do the slopey bit on this one. Uh, the Australia bit was one of the old official tags, so I've just left it. I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to go inside and mess with the shape from the inside. And at some point, I'm going to regret not doing this mirrored, but I've, since I've started doing decorative, I kind of tend to ditch mirrored. Alright, so we get rid of that. I don't want to do too much of this with um, half blocks because then it makes it really difficult to place lights. Uh, I can place them on the wall, so that's okay. And I probably won't use any beams in here because then I need to have something to cover up the beams on the level above. So I'm just thinking something simple like this. Just breaks up the roof a bit. Though, if I'm going to do that, I should really line it up with the windows. This looks weird having the solid bits um, coming down to a window. Uh, that's true, you could use the light panels in place of some of the blocks, that's right. Might just leave those solid. Down this end. Uh... Some weapon racks. I want to leave that block for some lighting. Actually, maybe I'll do it this way. Uh, get rid of that block. Do that one. And put the light here. look oh, that could work better pop out that one pop out that one 
that one and that one that might work better and then we can just leave that corner light there and we'll get rid of the other ones i think that might look better than these corner lights Do I need to hide a bathroom over this side? I don't think I do. So this side's all the working area. This is where they're actually working and doing their stuff. Over this side, we might have a little bit more storage. And then much of this other area can be dedicated to actually getting um, power things, uh, like batteries and stuff in here, putting the remote controlled, and then stairs up to the upper level. Uh, though I have neglected to implement a way to get from one side to the other. So we might need a tunnel going over the top here. Like some sort of catwalk tube thing that's airtight. Thanks, Row 042. Thanks, Row 042. Uh, this is not a roof. This is a floor of the next level up. So these could be a problem. But we'll see. See if there's too many lights and I need to get rid of some. Because this is the next level. It'll be up here. Uh, so a catwalk between the welders, I guess, could work. I could knock out two of the welders and just have four. Yeah, that's a valid option. Because I can't really, at this level, well, actually I might be able to catwalk around them. Let's see. This is going to dictate a bit how I do the next bit of the build, so I figure I'll sort this out now. If we do that, that, and that. Wait, no, not that. Oh wait, no. Uh, I can do that even better. That. There we go. Now we have a way to get to the other side, and we have a way to get up. Though the ladder doesn't actually work. That way around. That's annoying. That's really annoying. Hmm. Oh well. I don't know why it doesn't work. Oh, it's probably it's probably the railing. Nah, it's probably the ra railing. I think. Let's try it without it. No, it just doesn't work. So if instead we do this, and then do this, it should work. So now we grab on there, we climb up, and when you're at the top, you hit F, and you're up. I think that works. Looks pretty neat. Got the necessary safety railings and all that, so that's good. I'm happy. 
Okay, that, that solves that issue of how you get from one side to the other. Even if it's super awkward. Uh, then... You have the yellow button on the... Yeah, the little... It almost looks like a pneumatic cylinder or something. Does look almost like a bit of an access way. Okay, so... Oh! Yeah, that's right. Drone... We need, like, a drone controller. Like, drone operator area that looks... Which I guess... I guess this could sort of serve as that. This area down the end here. Where we've got this bank of computers and people at them and... This is sort of the drone controllers, which means what I want to do on these displays is put uh, script artificial horizon. Because that, I think, gives the gives a nice implication of what it's doing, is that these are controller seats. Oops, keep going the wrong thing. Yeah. I mean, you can you can try KB. Uh, custom turret controllers. Yeah. The thing about the cust, I think yeah, maybe a bank of them could work. Um. Have a look. I thought I had them somewhere on here, but apparently I don't. <laughs> yeah, KB, I, I'm really cold this morning, so I just turned that um, the sit stand command off temporarily. I mean, the other thing I could have done, I could do, is use control seats. And control seats, I guess, in f would look probably more... That looks a bit weird with them in front of those, though. How does it look in front of the programmable block? Huh. Custom target controls are on the programmable block. I need to remember that. Uh, which one do you guys reckon looks more like a control seat for a drone controller? Yeah, I know the old flight seats. I just find them ugly. They just... I've never I've never really liked them. They, they always felt a bit out of place. That's why I always used the Colt Command Consoles mod. Because um, it just... The other ones just never felt quite right. These ones. But I guess in this instance, it's possibly one that would work. Because it does look like that sort of controlling from an LCD perspective. Yeah, it's probably better. It's also more compact. Yeah. Uh, Alright, fine. I will change these up then. Instead of being a script, let's go text and images. Oh, what? I 
I don't have my LCD image mod. Need to add that. No, Evan, SnowRunner's not coming back. Uh, and... uh, to be brutally blunt about SnowRunner, it... It's a perfect example of um, my two necessary but not sufficient conditions for playing a game on stream. One is I need to be enjoying myself and the other is you guys need to be enjoying yourselves. Um, and SnowRunner the first wasn't true. Because it was 99% single player and 1% cooperative in the sense that I was forced to go and refuel the other guys by jumping onto their map. And so I wasn't enjoying it. Um, which meant I wanted to stop playing it. So I did. And I have no expectation of returning to it. It would... If I were to return to it, it would be quite some time in the future and not really worth planning around. Um, it just wasn't... It just wasn't fun. Let's go... Text editor... Ah, yeah. So... Yes, Survival Impossible. <laughs> Man. I'm trying to figure out the best way to do stuff with um, Survival Impossible. I want to do more with it. I just want to figure out a way to do it so that it doesn't feel like I'm just doing one episode every few months. Um, and I'm not 100% sure on how to do that yet, but I... I have some ideas and I have an idea about a very, very cool end goal, as in a long-term end goal. Um, that's, yeah, something something I want to figure out properly before I, I do it. But the, the kind of thing I'm leaning to for Survival Impossible is getting the base up and finished and getting myself to space and then perhaps even using that as a jump start for a season two that is a fresh start with some mod changes and a refresh of all the mods and ideas but having the ability to potentially go back to my original base to get resources if needed but mostly starting fresh that's kind of where i'm at at the moment i'm just trying to figure out the best way to do it because i don't want to kill survival impossible i don't want to end it where it was um because I'm not done with it. But I also don't want to continue it the way that I've been doing it. Because it hasn't worked for me. Um, that's kind of... So I'm trying to work that out. And once I have, that'll be the new big thing. Um, I also suspect that once Scavenger Hunt uh, is finished up, I'll probably be back able to have more time with it. Because... The recording time I use for Scavenger Hunt will probably become the recording time for Assertive Acquisitions, which will leave me more time to do Survival Impossible. Well, I don't, I don't get what you mean, Necrovore. Uh, yeah, Charlie's stitches are out. She's happily de-cone of shamed. Um, and being her usual ridiculous self. Um, <laughs> which is good. 
And we were back at dog training last night and she was actually pretty well behaved. Okay, I think this makes this look enough like a work area now. Which means we can set up upstairs to be the drone controller on this side. And then the other side can be all living areas and storage. How best to arrange this? Thanks, Spectre. Does it look like on top of the light? Um, okay. I mean... This this thing's going to have quite a high PCU, but that's just because the, there's going to be a lot of these sorts of blocks, so I'm not worried. But I'm probably going to need... Probably going to need to put these more toward the outside, since... I'd like there to be as many of these as the largest wing of drones that can be spawned. Or at least kind of give that idea. Maybe eight will be enough to sell it. Yeah, KB, I haven't actually thought about uh, how... Capac would enter assertive acquisitions, um, but I have certainly, I certainly have talked to him about it already, and that he's um, quite keen on it, and obviously TFE is quite happy to play with both of us. Please do what I want it to do, want it to do. You mean you get two people to run over instead of one TFA? Is that what you mean? <laughs> I don't think there is one. Or if there is, it's probably going to take me like three years to find it. Uh, we haven't figured out how to get TFAs... Um, recording to uh, work yet properly. It is. It was actually worse this week than the previous. Even though we went to fiddle with it. I'm not sure my slopey bit at the front is going to work. So I'm going to get rid of it. I think it, all it's doing is adding uh, a shape that I thought would be nice but actually doesn't work. I don't think I was too harsh in calling TFE number, Capac number two when he wasn't listening. <laughs> he was just jabbering away and ignoring me entirely. That seems like a very Capac thing to do. I thought that was quite a reasonable thing to say. Oh wait, uh... That's what I want. Uh, no, the... So the Demos, the reason... The reason for the rows of consoles is that if you notice the radio callouts in ACS, they actually have, um... Oh, maybe the console should go down this end. Um, they actually have it stated that the drone... 
it's implied that the drones are controlled by people, not AI. Because there are drone controllers. And that's what these guys are. I think that works better. And I think you might be right. I think if we're going to have a meeting room, it should be down the end with the window. <laughs> Would have been better or worse if he set up a camcorder to record his PC screen. Well, he'd then also need a capture card. Um, and I'm not... I'm not of a mind to encourage people who record with me to go out and spend money on equipment, as that seems to be... That, just, that doesn't feel right to me. So, the drone wings that I'm planning for this thing to spawn would be groups of... Anywhere between four and eight drones. NVENC requires an NVIDIA card existence. Which TFE does not have. <laughs> Sub goal for community capture card splits he sends to people. <laughs> sure, Mavlite. I'm just going to have to ignore the fact that there's high voltage things on the floor. There's not much I can do about it. Uh, now, do I have the... Oh, I don't know. Uh... Vending machines. Okay, I do have them somewhere. Fly the drones better or the shocks continue. <laughs> yep. Sounds like a plant. Uh, we need a wall between these. They shouldn't be in a shared space. Um, do I use the ugly walls? Nah. Uh, I'm imagining there'll be some degree of hot bunking in this, uh, in this base to facilitate the number of people that it looks like it has. I can't imagine any other way it's going to work. There is an AMD equivalent to NVENC, but it doesn't work on their older cards properly or isn't actually a thing on their older cards because I don't think they had proper encoding hardware on their cards until relatively recently. It was one of the reasons why NVIDIA was superior to AMD in that regard because they're a software company, not a hardware company. At least if you look at how much... Whoops, knocked something over. At least if you look at how many engineers they've got. I remember seeing something about that. NVIDIA focuses a lot more on the software than AMD does. It's 
one of the that and my bias against AMD are the reasons why I have Intel and Nvidia stuff only. Uh, maybe I'll try this. Come on, scroll down. As a professional whose job literally relies on the gear, I'd say it's no longer a bias, but job security. Yeah, yeah. Need the stability. How does this look as a conference room? Yeah. The floors may end up annoying me later, but for now I'll just ignore them. A lot of driver issues still now, Ryan. Not as many as there were back in that era, but yeah. Still a lot of driver issues with... AMD's driver issues are very similar to... Intel's current GPU driver issues. Uh, AMD's gotten a bit better, but still pretty shocking comparatively. Okay, we're gonna have to do something with the outside of this. It looks awful. Um, 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 um. What can I do? Change this one up to a cross. Where's the cross? Clock junction. Might look better. Yeah. Uh, glass toppers doesn't need the armor. Um, uh, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not liking where this root point at all. I need to do something different. It's too big. It's too big. I mean, this might... the My feelings on this may be improved if I painted it. Like, I could possibly improve this with a bit of paint. It's just hard making enough roofs, like headroom space to make a room like this feel interesting without making the whole build huge and one of the issues with a half block roof is that I'd have to do this to transition or and I don't I don't like that oh nope or do this may look better. Um. He's annoying. Yeah, the trouble is the 45 half block is on the wrong side of the block. And I don't like the 2x1 slope. I think it looks weird. Uh, 
Uh, poop. I have to redo this somehow. Uh, three by one slopes are not a thing. Also, um, generally speaking, space engineers, unless you're building at a very specific scale, is not something I find eaves as a thing that works very well. Because um, the having an overhang, overhanging eave on over a window or a wall. Uh, tends to be very, very large. Like, it's a 1.25 meter overhang. I mean, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe the way to go is this. Um, yeah. I, ha I was thinking of trying to get a turret on top of this, but... I think we can deal with that later if need be. Oh wait, I need the one by twos. So I think that works better. Thanks existence, thanks for two months. I think that looks better. It's a lot of light in here. I'm now not sure about the windows on the side. <laughs> Yeah, Eric Board, I I don't mod like Shaq does. I don't like to. <laughs> I think it um I I'm not a, I've never been a big fan of the there's a mod for that solution to problems. <laughs> but that's that's kind of that's kind of Shaq's that's whole that that's Shaq's whole thing, so it it very much makes sense for him to do that. Like with his whole mod all the things stuff. Uh, we just we just take different approaches. I'm just testing this out. I think it's going to look terrible, but I'm curious. Yep, looks terrible. Agreed, Perseus. I would rather torture myself using <laughs> trying to find a vanilla solution. I I don't like my mods to require heaps more mods to be added. Technically could put safety railings around the top, couldn't I? I'll see if I have access to the roof from this other section first. Um, one of the reasons I've always been a bit more hesitant on how many mods I add is that... If you look back to Survival Maybe, I have series that run a long long time. Even my intended to be short ones run a long time. And so the more I um, the more mods I add, the more likely it is that things are going to break. Uh, I want to try something. How does it look if I do this? All right, uh, I need to go this first. Uh, 
Oh, don't know where that ended up. Yeah, I think that works better. That gives us a light in here. Would have annoyed me if I didn't have one. I think it looks okay from the outside too. Really, where did that thing end up? <laughs> oh, there. <laughs> Okay, I think that's alright. We'll have a different height of thing over the welding area. So it should work out alright. Um, I'm thinking I will do this. Just to give us something, another layer to work with in the design on the outside. This means we can have two different textures working together. No, KB, I don't play with offline mods because you can't play multiplayer with offline mods. And even Survival Impossible is multiplayer. Uh, I'm fortunate that the majority of the mods I use are made by people I've had contact with at some point. And those people tend to notify me when something's going to change that might break my save. Um, and will often work with me to make sure that it doesn't break my stuff. Uh, so I've been very lucky on that front. Like, for example, Thraxus was working on our scrap in the throughout Survival Impossible, and he's always been in contact with me about things that might break and things that he wants to change and how they might work and that sort of stuff and making sure that it doesn't mess up Survival Impossible, which is really nice. <laughs> hey, Gross. You haven't broken my saves. I mean, you have modded some things that have been intention specifically made for my saves, though. Looking forward to some of some more of your work for Scavenger Hunt being shown off. Alright. Do I want to make that two blocks high or do I want to not? Yeah, the assertive loot hasn't broken anything. As far as I can tell. I've broken some things, but nothing that breaks people's games, just that my mod hasn't worked exactly as intended. Uh, any thoughts of what to do with this vertical space here? I'm drawing a blank. Oh, Scavenger Hunt this week has is the episode of a Space Engineers recording that I've had the most fun in in so long. I can't remember having that much fun and doing something that unique in Space Engineers in a really long time. It was really cool. Uh, Gruz, this is a build for a change in ACS that I want to implement hopefully today so that I can record with TFE with this change in place. Uh, the idea is to get rid of the whole war and peace mode for all of these bases, and instead, when you've annoyed ACS enough, these bases can spawn and call in massive numbers of drones to smash your base. So you have a specific thing you can go and attack to prevent further attacks from coming at you. Um, 
I'm not filling this whole room with posters. Although, I probably could um, fill it with a little bit of piping to pipe up to uh, turrets that are on top. Because I think this base deserves some actual piping for turrets. And Charlie is itching herself like I forgot to give her one of her tablets. And I think I might have forgotten last night. I don't recall. Yeah, exactly, Graz. The Military Drone Operations Center is pretty much exactly what I'm doing. Uh, I can put stuff on these panels here, but the ones that are in here, I'm stuck because the chairs are on them. Oh, or do you mean? Did you mean put windows here to keep the thing going? In fact, I should probably do this. I am not painting the interior of my base as orange. <laughs> That's not happening. No, no, no. No, no. No, it's obvious there is a single ship that spawns that doesn't have gyros, and I'm going to fix that at the end of this stream today. The spaghetti cruiser does not have any gyroscopes, and I need to fix it. Uh, how does that feel from inside? Oh, yeah, that's alright. Golden Spear, does it not have a gyro as well? Okay. I will fix them. Just add that to my notes. I could have sworn I checked them. Like, it's one of my check things, so I don't know how that didn't get fixed. Don't know how I missed that. It's odd. about middle. Oh, it's enough. Maybe a little bit too far to the right. Yes, truncation is fun, TFE. Truncation is fun. Now have a look what I changed my Discord status to.
What are you doing, dog? You're being very distracting. Alright, just gotta add artificial horizon to each of these. I should really just do them from the control panel. Control station 13. Script. Artificial horizon 14. Script. Artificial horizon. Is it gonna let me do multiples? No, it doesn't. I <sighs> have to do them one by one. Hey, Bro Bob, how's it going? Uh, oops, not text. Image script. Artificial. Oh man, I really wish we could set these things properly, like bulk set them. Bulk set LCD stuff would be very, very useful. There we go. Yeah, I figured I figured it was basically impossible, Drago. Um That was kind of my assumption. <laughs> Robo, party of seven. They're ordering redfish and bluefish with sides. Uh I have played way too much playtime recently. <laughs> I'm up to like fifty hours in the game. <laughs> Charlie, bumping my mouse hand is really not helpful. Uh, right. I do think, yeah, turrets like that is the way to go. Hey, thanks, Dreadon Mox. Thanks for nine months. I don't know that you want a Bruce Bruce ship, because uh, Bruce Bruce, I don't know that the, I don't think he's that effective. <laughs> uh, if you're wondering what I'm jabbering on about, Bruce Bruce is a NPC helper that I've got in my Seven Days to Die series. <laughs> Who is questionably useful. On mouse. Yeah, I haven't I haven't looked at uh, Lucas's new light copy settings mod, um, and seeing. To try and figure out how it might, uh, how I might end up using it, considering I always I already use build vision to copy light settings around. I think it works. It'll work better one if you set all your lights at once, uh, rather than setting them individually. But I haven't looked at it yet. I'm on his Discord server, so I got pinged about the um, mod release today. It looks quite... Looks like it could be useful, I just haven't figured out how to make it useful for me yet. With the habits that I've already developed. Uh, what 
what shall I do with this one? Could work for now. Um, don't think I can do the same here. No, I can't. I need that to be solid blocks. Yeah, KB, that's what I'm thinking. Um, that it'll be a bit like undo, where I've now, it's now become just ingrained in me to press it in Space Engineers because I've got it in so many of my build saves. So I, I actually use undo a lot these days. But at the start, it was really, really hard to get in the habit of using it. Right. I think... I might do this. Yeah. Then... Just cover these up. It's looking very office blocky, so I'm going to have to do something to add some extra detail on the outside once we get to that point. But also, I think working with some different textures here will help once I get to that point, but I'm not going to do that yet. Uh, I haven't tried to undo in... recordings, because they're, s they're survival, but uh, when I was loading up, when I loaded up Scavenger Hunt, uh, not Scavenger Hunt, when I loaded up a set of acquisitions to get some blueprints to publish, I actually did a couple of times press and I'm like, ugh, of course it doesn't work. Because this isn't a, well, this isn't a creative mode game. This could work. Then we can do some things with slopes here to add more interest on this bit. Oh yeah, I think I think I can probably add something to pad out this side so it's not so flat because it is pretty flat. But also, I do kind of want it to look like an office building, so I'm of two minds there. Uh, I think the best option for this part will be maybe we can do. these windows above. Ah, give me that thing. Oh, I know one of the things I might be able to put up here. Put along here.
There we are. <laughs> uh, once that's done in blue, which is how I normally do these. That helps. Kind of pleased that I actually left enough room for it. I don't normally do that. do I do with this next bit? So we've got our internal workspaces. Drone gear making sort of area, which I might take a little bit of the gear out of. A couple of these shelves. So they don't match. Um, our sort of design area. Obviously, we're going to have weapons around the place because this is a proper military installation. We've got our little blueprint desk. Then we go upstairs. And we've got our flight control ops. Which I need to figure out how to get some lights into. In fact, would it be so weird for this one to have lights on the floor? But just have a few of them. What I'm thinking here is that... Yeah. Yeah, that could work. And I'll change the colour of these lights to something that makes a bit more sense. Probably to the bluish tint of these screens. Uh, even though, yes, you'd, in real world this would be done in a different colour, but the to make it look like these screens are generating a lot of the light, I prefer to use the blue. Because the only other spot that I can put lights in here... That uh, would be above the door that I'm about to place in this block. Do I want a hatch door? Out to the welder room? Maybe I do. Uh, Gruz, I don't want to put a blueprint on the blueprint table because of performance reasons, largely. That doesn't... It's so unlikely to be seen by players, um, but potentially could cause issues for performance, so it just doesn't... For me, it doesn't balance out in terms of usefulness. Right, so on this side, we need... Core, we need living space, and we need more storage space. I think. So what I'm, thi what I'm imagining for that is... actual s cargo containers in a corridor. Uh, I might put a few crates around the corner of the welding room as well.
But I don't want to put too much in here. Just something like that. And those will get painted yellow once I get around to the painting phase. This mouse. I need a new one so bad. <laughs> that. And that. And that. Oh, wait, no. Uh, hmm. That'll break air tightness. Unless I put stuff on the inside. So I wanted to put a turret on here. No, not a artillery turret. <laughs> I don't think we'll go with an artillery turret. I think we might just go with assault cannon turrets on top here. Uh, which means we probably should switch out these blocks for these blocks. Even if this these have less chance of hitting you, the uh, the danger they present and the, with the sound, I think is uh, worth it. I think it adds something. Yeah, they, they are scary looking, even if not actually necessarily as scary a thing to fight. Because if you're moving quickly, this is the real threat. The Gatling gun. Because it puts out more ammo, so it's each round, like, there's a higher chance you'll get hit by something. But there's a higher chance that if something hits you, this will do more damage. Uh, they'll fire at 800 meters, because that's all I can, that's as much as you can make them do. Because um, the AI aiming radius is only 800 meters. But this base is going to be dangerous due to the drones, not due to turrets that are on it. So, um, it's going to spawn drones when you attack it, and it's going to do so in a potentially fairly nasty fashion. need to figure out where I'm going to put stairs in here as well. So let's do the stairway because that's going to dictate a lot of stuff. As I don't want to use... I don't want to use ladders to get between the levels. For everything anyway. I like... I'm happy to use ladders for little bits and pieces, but I don't like using them for everything. I think they get a bit too wonky. I didn't want to use the warfare batteries here because I I wanted it to be visually locked. I'm pretty sure the warfare batteries are still airtight, but they just don't look it. So I wanted to use ones that looked it.
Uh, yeah, I was going to have access through there as well. It's probably a good idea to pop it out now. Uh, yeah, Gruz, this... Well, this one... This one's going to be capable of... This should be suitable for moon and planet operations because it is built with airlocks. So, my idea was to build one base that can work for all and then over time we can design some new base designs within this framework. Um, but I didn't want to do it... I didn't want to give myself too many things to start off with. I wanted to have something that I might be able to get working today. Because I really wanted to... Um, ideally, make something that TFE and I can face off in our AA recording this afternoon. That's my goal. Uh, oh, you, Deep Space. Uh, I haven't put any more thought into the idea of having space bases other than yes I want to at some point have space bases but I haven't put more thought into that yet but at some stage yes I do want to make space bases uh, this one would not be super s this, like, this design, I could just rip off the bottom bits, slap it on an asteroid, and it'd probably work just fine as well. Would need gravgen, though. But yeah, space bases are one of the things I want to do when I get around to it. Um. Okay. I think maybe I'll put a doorway in here. Charlie! It's really off-putting when you knock my mouse in. It is. Uh, yeah. So, let's go half wall, half wall. Door. Then we'll go with another cargo container on this side. That's not a cargo container. Oh. Then put some shelves in here too. Yeah, I think that I think that gives a good feel of lots of storage space. Uh then I guess I'll just cover this over for now. I don't think there's any good reason for messing with that much more than it currently is. I think this feels just fine as a storage area. Doesn't need a higher roof and a ceiling. Uh, I might do the same here. And fiddle with the roof height once I've placed all these down. So I'm trying to decide whether I would have the rest and recreation area up here on this floor or whether I'd have it down on this floor.
Well, yeah, PF throwaway, but that depends. Are you working on this level over here, and so we'd have to go downstairs, or are you working on this level down here, and so we'd have to go upstairs? Uh, no, I'm not going to move the stuff, because this area is going to be needed for sleeping quarters. So that's why I've blocked off the storage area where it has been. Um, I need that space. We'll go sleeping quarters here. I'm going to need, like, shower facilities. I'm going to need that sort of stuff as well. Which all adds to the challenge of fitting all this stuff in. Then we go with a door. And then a shower. No, we don't. Uh, actually, I can probably use a normal shower here. No, I'm going to use a shower with light. Uh, where did I put my shower lights? Somewhere. I'll put them here. Wait, do I have the block with the light on it? No, I do not. Need to add that mod too. And this is why I don't like adding too many mods. The shower light one just seemed like... <laughs> given, I, <laughs> given I used the shower to bathroom thing so much and there were so many times where I struggled to get lights in there, it just seemed like it was worth adding for a single block. Uh, mods. Shower light. Okay. And load. Need to shower by candlelight. Ah, that sounds like a terrible idea. Thanks, awesome Tommaso. Thanks for 11 months. First anniversary is paper. I wonder if that includes cash. Hmm. Alright, now we get a shower light. And then our toilet bathroom, I think it's called. Yep. There we go. is going to be a very heavily used bathroom as there is only one for all these people. I could put another one down here but then I can't put a door on it.
Um, Two-story toilet. What? I mean, what a, a an easy way to separate the two would be to just add an extra toilet. Uh, yeah, like this. Or even more so like that. Yeah, I think that feels fine. Yeah, we don't really have any doors that look nice that don't have windows. Because yes, you can use the original door, but the original door looks so incredibly out of place now. It also has its projections that go beyond the block bounds, which I don't like. Like, if you replace these two with these, first of all, it's in the center of the block, so you can see between them, which isn't helpful. Uh, but also, it projects into the bed. So I just, I just accept that um, we have glass on these doors because <laughs> you can't really do any different uh, I might move these stairs over to here Yeah, the the original door needs a bit of spit and polish. There are quite a, there are a few of the original blocks that need some badly need some love to bring them in line with the new aesthetic that space Eng the newer aesthetic that Space Engineers has. Happy with that. I definitely prefer this with the little cutout. I do not like the little corner that juts down and makes it feel like you're going to smack your head on it. Hi, Farnish. Uh, right. So this is going to now be... A little bit of a wreck area, and then we have mess hall downstairs. Uh, do I want to match it to the other side? Maybe. We'll start with that. Start with a mirrored, and then decide whether I want to instead make this side a bit different. Actually, let's let's not go mirrored. Let's do this instead. Uh, use the same block there, but. Then not go up to the, not go up the two blocks in height. So what can we do in this much space as a wreck area? Not a lot. That's fine.
don't know what to do about these stairs. Whether I can do anything with that space to make them more useful. Um, yeah, KB, I, I wouldn't be averse to doing some Escher-esque space station builds for space stuff. I don't like to do it for planetary bound things because obviously providing the gravity components is not something I'm particularly on board with, but the idea of doing it in space, yeah, absolutely. Uh, if they came up at the corner, you can't exit them. They can't go down another block, annoyingly. Unless you're talking they come up here rather than over here. But I don't think that helps me in any useful way. Unless we do this. Move them down a block. Oops. Which does give me a little bit more space. To play with around here, which is nice. Ah, yeah, that's perfect. Because then I can put... A dispenser... And a kit. I was thinking a kitchen, maybe, but then we've got the mess hall downstairs, so maybe not. And I'm not sure what to do with these two spots. I kind of want to put a TV somewhere, but I also kind of don't. Oh wait, I can do this. Uh, there we go. Could do that. <laughs> I think that's a bit generous. Here we go with that. And then a little bar section. Oh my gosh, this dog is working out how to annoy me when streaming. She, every time she walks up to me, she just bumps into my elbow as hard as she can. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm happy with this. ceiling wise I was thinking of keeping it nice and low on this side for this part no there are no, there's no gym equipment stuff not without mods Uh, 
Let's go with these ones, actually. Yeah, I'm happier now that they're not the same height. But I might bring it up at this row. A little bit of asymmetry there, I think, helps. Yes, this base would be quite the acquisition. This base is meant to... Is going to make your life very difficult to acquire, though. Uh, and... Make your life difficult while it exists. Is the idea. What is my PCU count with this thing, actually? Uh, 6,300. Yeah, it really is getting up there. Though, most of... A good chunk of that is the not-in-use control stations. Also, that needs to change. Uh, so, we've got probably... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So, that's 600 PCU just there alone. Then, downstairs, we've got, like, five programmable locks. That's... 100 each or 125 each. Yeah, this is sort of... This is intended as boss level. This is... This is my new attempt at making ACS have something more interesting to the combat than what I'd had before. Because I didn't... After playing with it a little bit, the... The war mode as it exists currently doesn't really work. Uh, also, message spam with it, which annoys me. Need to... So that was another reason I wanted to change it. do this but I might think about where I can put a ladder that goes up to the roof although I may just not so I'm feeling like this has kind of filled out the space that I created reasonably well thanks Rayleigh Jones thanks for eight months yes more evil buildings and this one is the evil of evilist or most evil of evil? Evilist of... You know what I'm trying to say. Not sure what to do with this corner piece. I'm thinking maybe this would be the way you go. Thank you so much, Mavalite. Thank you for the five gift subs. Thank you for the 50 <laughs> overall. Oh yeah, I think that that's the right block for that spot. Yes, I can't I can't really have ACS spawn volcano lair bases, unfortunately. Much as that would be fun, given how much fun I had designing the one in survival, maybe. Does this feel weird? No. Nah. I'm down with this. Being fairly cramped. Got room for lights. Got a nice long corridor. Need to put some railings in here. Oh, no, wait. Did that wrong? 
Ah. Need to put some railings in here so that I can put the half railing in over here. Yep. Uh, yes, TFE. Spawning planets doesn't necessarily help with the idea of getting um, volcano bases, though. Uh, Skeleton King, I will not speculate on such things for a variety of reasons. Uh, suffice to say, I should not. Uh, dog is not angry, dog is just <laughs> frustrated that she can't get out of my shed. Cool. So this part's finished, I think. We've got our drone welding bay in here. All this feels pretty good. I'm going to have to fiddle with a lot of this lighting to get it feeling right as well. Uh, I did disable the exit button. Uh, lighting in here is going to be tricky, but I should be able to put a corner light along the edge here without it looking too janky. Let's get a mess hole done. Stick the windows on the outside so we can start with one table there. I like to try if I can to offset the tables so they're not all just on a grid. Makes it a little less boring. And apparently that's all the tables I can fit. So maybe I will set them on a grid. So I can put one there. And one along the wall. A little romantic table. <laughs> Thank you for the 300 bits. Here he types. Planet Death Star equals ACS Dangerous Encounter. <laughs> hmm. Uh... Yes. Yes. We'll we'll run we'll getting from birthing to ACS uh, uh, there. We'll getting to birthing to the drone control kill you because you have to run through the welding bay if it's working. Yeah, probably. I really couldn't come up with a better way of doing that without it totally messing with uh, actually. Maybe I can. Thank you so much, Horsa. Thank you for another ten gift subs, you nutter. Thank you very much. I could possibly do something with no, 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 yes, these. Uh-oh. Just dropped something on the floor. I'm to 
totally change up how the entryway works between these two. That might actually be better. Oh, Charlie! <laughs> That's very off-putting. Yes, I hear you. I'm deliberately not responding because you're then going to just do it more. Uh, do I put door? I think I put a door. <laughs> Oh, you're, you're trying me, dog. You're trying me. There we go. We will get rid of these doors. That's not a Charlie, it's a whiny. Indeed. Thanks, Omni5. Thanks for the 50 bits. Yeah... Yeah, although, <laughs> yes, it is It is a downside to um, streaming, to being Australian, is that it's, it does make it hard for Australians to watch, because I stream during the middle of the day, or the morning. Local time. Although Grozob seems to manage it while he's at work. <laughs> Not that I'm sure that he should, but he seems to manage it. <laughs> Dog, why are you so clever? Ugh. She's figured out if she knocks my arm, she gets a lot more of a reaction. So now she's started doing it all the time. I don't know what to do. I need her to calm down. Once she calms down, then I'll let her out. <sighs> Thanks, Turkey Neck. Thanks for five months. <laughs> I think she was less whiny when she had the bucket on her head. I really wish we had a passage two with light. Yeah, sh so the reason you couldn't hear her before and you can hear her today is that She's walking up to me. She's looking from my right shoulder up to my head. And that means that she's whining straight at the microphone. Uh, which she doesn't normally do. She normally does it from over at the door. But she's figured out that if she comes up closer, she gets more of a reaction. So she started doing that. But she has now settled down on her bed, which means I can let her out. So I'll do that. All right. Up you get. Tomorrow I run over your toe. Yeah, yes. There we go. No more whiny dog into microphone. <laughs> yeah, at some stage you might get a camera you can see some of this on. Uh, I'm not ready for that yet. Charlie is a big girl, so she she can uh, very much get close to the microphone. Don't know how I'm going to feel about this. I don't think I want to do that. Uh, what could I put? Oh, right. That's what I could do.
sci-fi armor the plate savior uh right um dip, dip, dip. let's just fill this in boringly and then we'll add detail after Okay, cool. We have most of the external structure. Hmm. Did that bring back the. Yeah, it did. Uh, yeah, I could do black neons as wiring around the door, couldn't I? Yeah, I was just thinking exactly that. Windows in the stairwell. Um, that's, that's why I popped those off. I was like, oh, maybe. I just wasn't sure if I wanted to do it on both blocks or just the one. Maybe both. Maybe not the top row? No, I think it needs it. Yeah, I think it'll be fine. It'll be alright. No, it does mean that happens. Which actually I prefer, because this table is no longer a romantic table and is now a functional table against a wall. Um, <laughs> which seems more appropriate for a military facility than romantic table. another table over here but I think what I'll do instead is put a bar But now you can't have a romantic dinner with your boss. Sure, I, uh... I want to give my boss that option. See you, he who types. Cool. Once we add a little bit of the blue detailing to this, I think it'll tie in fairly well with the other bases. I'm going to have fun trying to get the drones to spawn in this area for the close, spo uh, close spawns. Uh, so now we have this up here. Let's get rid of that. And that means we need to rearrange these beds a little bit. Nope, that's not the block I wanted. I want this one. Something like that, I think works. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think more turrets are going to be in order, but... I just want to make sure this feels mostly right before I do the lighting. Need to put this railing back in that popped out. This is definitely a better way of traversing between the two sections, I think. Of course, there's no way to move between the top floor and below on this side, which is obviously not ideal, but I think we can accept that because this the stairwells or ladder shafts do take up a fair bit of space. And we do have a way to go along the lower floor through this area to this production facilities area. And these guys, the people that work in here, are working on the drones, so should be <coughs> appropriately qualified to safely traverse the welding area. Maybe up on the walls. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Swap the ladder side. Because, yeah, it does make some more sense that it would be on the shop side rather than the other side. But also this. think is better. Then it's straight outside the door. Climb up. Then I need to replace this catwalk again. And put this in there. There we go. I do love having access to these sorts of blocks now. It makes such a big difference. Like these, these ones make a huge difference to making ladder shafts that go up to catwalks. I just wish we had a way to do a transition between this whole catwalk and the half ones. Because the half ones utility is seriously limited by the fact that you can't easily transition between the two while still maintaining the continuous railing. Uh, the reason for the double railings is I think it looks better. I think it looks better having a railing on the wall because most catwalks would have a hand hold on both sides. So if you're going to put the safety in of putting catwalk rails in, you should put it in properly. I presume it's a safety thing for passing people or something, I don't know. Oh, right. Yes, I can. Good thought. Hello, empty one? Where are you? There you are. Okay, what to do with all of this?
Hmm. Didn't really think that part through. Oh well. We'll just do that then. I was planning on doing it the whole way round, but I'm like, oh wait, we don't have blocks for that. Uh, yep, gonna... I'm going around the whole thing now, trying to do some stuff to clean up the exterior. I think that breaks that up a bit. Then we gotta go... Around here. Hey, fun. Um, Yeah, this this is obviously quite brickish, but I feel like that was kind of uh, almost unavoidable. Probably could have been avoided somehow, but I think it was... Gives, it gives, to me, that military feel of something built for purpose, not for style. I think the letters might look better here. Yeah. Yeah, I think the letters look better there. Uh, apathy, I completely disagree. Um, Keen's DLC stuff that they've done with Space Engineers, I think, I would say has been done better than most dev companies, so no, I disagree. I think any sandbox game is only limited by your own creativity within that environment. Um, while I don't think, while I certainly would have preferenced other things Keen could have done with their DLCs, I don't think they've done anything wrong with them. Uh, there probably would be a way to randomize letters on spawn. Through complex use of the um, grid manipulation stuff and replacing certain letters with other letters. Though I don't know that there's any randomization capacity in the block replacer yet. I think there is. I, Lucas has talked about maybe adding it, but I don't think he's done it yet. So at this stage, I don't think it's possible, but I think it could be in the future. All right. Painting time. ACS over the big door. I feel like that might be a bit too much text. The, if I get rid of this one, maybe I could do that. Although, uh, I've deliberately avoided ACS being the code that's on anything. It's all assert, because assert is the company, the organization. 
Oh, because that's the NPC tag. Which is annoying, because that means it's an even number of characters. Um, <laughs> which isn't helpful. Uh, I've, I just can't think of a three character thing for assert. Like maybe A S T, but I feel like the R adds something. No, it is not A S S for short. Even though Discord today wanted to truncate it that way. Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh... Let's get some details on things and try and get some paint on this so it's not all just basic armor styles. And maybe do another one over here. up that wall a little bit and now where's my paint tool let's well, let's grab this color let's switch this up to uh, oh what skin oh my mouse is driving me nuts what the how do I turn skin up oh what have I done Okay, shift middle mouse turns skin application on or off. Okay, that's not an option. I don't think I want to use sci-fi on all these because it's got too much going on, but I could use it on some of them. Wildless going to work. I could use that down the sides and then put sci fi in the middle. That could work. Yeah. I think that works reasonably well for the roof. What if. I think the weldless nicely gives us a an unbroken bit from this roof to here. Uh, sorry, from the wall to the roof, so it's not as noticeable that the wall ends it's at a slightly awkward height for that window. Go, maybe I'll go weldless over all of it and then I'll add more detail. That might be a way to go. I'll leave that well leave that as bog standard. Uh, the paint gun just colours things. It's the same as painting it with anything else. There's, there's no difference between it and painting normally once the paint is applied. Do, do, 
do do I feel like I'm going too heavy on the wildless here, but well, I'm gonna back it off in a minute. That's, yeah, that's definitely improved things. Actually, those could go corrugated. Let's try that. Yeah. Yeah, Necrovore, the multiplayer painting stuff's all been changed. And... Sounds like Keen are planning on changing it again. Based on something that uh, Marek tweeted about. Left off the wrong one. Yeah, this base is meant to look scary. It is meant to be a an effective intimidator. Other, I suppose I could do some clean, but that still has the same problem as the regular armor in that it's got this same repeating pattern. Uh, battered armor has a different pattern on it, doesn't it? So we can use that. So I could do like battered down that segment. But I think if I start using battered on this, I've got to use it a lot more. Uh, I don't... I might use battered, but I don't want to use any rust on this. I want this to feel well maintained. Uh, rather than run down. That kind of works. Oh yeah, batted on the legs. How does that work? Oh yeah. I think that's a good option. Helps separate it from the rest of it. to try and do as many bits of painting as I can with the vanilla methods because undo works for the vanilla painting method. Uh, yeah, I think it's time to add some colour and then we can see what other details we can add. I would also like to probably put some turrets on the side here but I'm not sure some turrets on the side here, but I'm not sure where I can fit them without them being awkward. 
could put it between the windows there, I suppose. I don't know where one would fit on this side. I think this side's kind of stuck. sci-fi through the middle yeah okay in the past I would have uh, done things to stop people from sapping a base like this but if that's how you want to go about it and if you want to do the zero challenge way of uh, defeating it, go for it. It's not, it's not my job to stop you. There are more interesting ways to engage with these sorts of NPCs, but if that's how you want to do it, then go. Go nuts. Paint, color, add. On it, honestly, Mr. GR, Mr. Green, um, I haven't felt that Space Engineers needed anything uh, ever since Lucas released the first Modular Encounter Spawner. I... Because you can get with, a, with mods everything you need. But I would like there to be more of that in vanilla, particularly to make it easier for players on all platforms to be able to mess around with NPCs. And especially given the fact that Keen is ostensibly an AI company as well. You'd think they'd do a bit more of that. And I think they are. That's about it. Uh, pretty much everything from my wish list video back in 2018 has been added. Uh, we got female engineers, we got a whole bunch of stuff like that that I thought was uh, needed. I'm debating whether to put any warning stripes around. I might put some grey warning stripes. Indeed, Necrovore. Uh, yes, dropping plain bits of armor with precision from height to take out each turret before you even get there. Yes, that that's that at least requires some serious engineering effort. Like to me, the Rod of God style attack is more legit and interesting than just mining under it.
Yeah, exactly, Drago. I'm in the same boat, same boat as you. I just want refinement of the current systems. I don't, I don't want Keen to add more things that are partially done. I want them to improve on the things that are currently in existence and make them better, because space engineers potential I think would be realized better that way uh, particularly potential as a like commercial product I think they'd f find it easier to get people interested in the game if it was more if they did more refined things uh, no, Mavalite, I don't want water and aerodynamics as a default. I love them as a mod, uh, but I don't want them as default, no. Aerodynamics, maybe. Uh, no, no, I think I like it as a mod better. I think it changes a bit too much of the core game to feel right. Yeah, yeah, Drago. Maybe something like uh, simple drag calculations would be would be good. But yeah, I think full on aerodynamics might uh, would be a step too far in my books. Wondering, can I do something? Ah, I don't think this is going to look any good, but I want to try it anyway. Should be battered. Yeah, I think this makes it look a bit weird. Yeah, not doing that. Uh, yeah, Graz, that's exactly what we're talking about. Talking about the way... There <clears throat> there are two sort of ways I think about a lot of this stuff, which is what I want in the base game and what I want to play with. Um, what I want to play with is going to be very different to what's in the base game because I've played closing in on 5,000 hours of the game. And unlike a lot of... Uh, people who spend a lot more of their time modding most of that 5,000 hours for me has been playing survival with an increasing amount of time in creative mode building stuff but like thousands of hours playing survival so for me I want to change up what I'm doing in survival rather than continuing to do the same thing so for me what I want personally is going to be different to what I want for the base game the base game I want something that's good for new players something that's good for them to get a better taste of what Space Engineers has to offer Right from the outset. Yeah, Farnesia, I'm... I'm at close to 5,000 hours and I'm constantly learning new things. Especially considering a lot of people in my comments and stuff keep telling me things I'm doing wrong and things I need to do better. <laughs> so there's... there's that. <laughs> Um, I wonder if I do something interesting with these, whether it's going to make it go wonky on the inside. Thanks, Dinom. Thanks for 22 months. Almost two years. Whoops. I'm wonky. Oh, that's all right on the inside. need more blue on this. I need to figure out where I can put more blue. 
Maybe this... Uh, no, because it's those... Been, oh, maybe the window's in blue? I think that was suggested earlier. Let's have a look. Let's try it out. Uh, let's go with... Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, the sci-fi ones just colour like everything else. Uh, whoop. There are very few blocks that... Can I just select sci-fi? Yeah, like that. No. No, curse you. Ah. Uh, I have added heat vents, Eisen. They are right here. Well, there's a valid point. I could use them for some more decorative stuff on ceilings. But I feel like the ceilings aren't the bit that needs some interest. I need to f think up some way of making these sides more interesting. They're really bricky. But I want it to have some internal logic as to why they're... why they've got something to them. Yeah, Drago, to me, part of refining um, Space Engineers to improve it would be adding additional access for modders to various parts of the game so they can do things like you're saying, turn stuff off so you don't dual calculate and that sort of thing. Uh, as I feel that that would enhance the options available for modders based on my limited understanding of the discussions that I see on such topics. Okay, we can do something with this. Prefer that. This was intentionally a little gap behind, so you can have kitchen service. I guess the other question I have is, do I need to... Like, does it need more detail or is it actually okay having this thing be quite brickish maybe it's okay see as obvious hey say uncle uh there's a strict color scheme for assert bases, as you can see as I turn around. They are all intended to have a matching color theme, which is the blue and gray. So that's what I work with. I don't do them any other color. Uh, uh, let's try this. Oh, weird. Gets rid of the... It now doesn't show colour when it's on the... On a setting that doesn't have colour. Interesting. Uh, 
Ah, uh, that's... no. No, nope, we're not doing that. I will hate that. Oh, uh, actually, we could do that. Because I could get rid of... Uh, where is it? If we go with... Okay, it seems my mouse scrolls up better than down. That off. Back to black. Do that. I don't, I don't mind that. I think it needs to possibly be changed up because I think I've got the blue wrong. Uh, but I don't mind it. Yeah, the blue's wrong. It's a little bit bright. Oh, wait, uh, what if I do... No, I can't do that, because that's actually the roof. Ah. Yeah, it kind of has to stop there, because otherwise I'm painting this whole block. That slightly annoys me. So those bits can stay. Uh, what I can do here actually to fix this is then put where is it? Come on. No, nope, we'll scroll upwards then fine. Be that way. That looks better. It was bothering me otherwise. Now I'm wondering if I can do the same to the other side, but I don't think I can because I've got... Oh wait, no, that's, that's just decorative. I can do the same to this side. Switch to worldless. And then I could do like that, but I think I might just leave it stopped there. Enhance the asymmetry. Or do this, but then I, the trouble if I do that is I then hide the T, or I'd have to invert the T. But I think I'll leave it there. That's definitely got some interesting shape to it, <laughs> with the blue colouring on it now. Uh. Turret. Uh, let's do this.
from a distance it looks like a printer a bit. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, I'm actually really happy with how that breaks up that side. What could we do over here to break up this side? Let's bring the sun over here. Laser jet base online. Um, Farnish, none of the current versions that you should be using of my mods have spider drones. Was thinking this. On. Yeah. Uh, there's not much I can do with half panels because I need the full panels to provide the air tightness and actually enclose the internal space. I think I'm I think I'm ready. I think I'm ready to do some lighting. <laughs> uh no, there's there is no remote nor antenna on this grid. Uh antenna part should be relatively easy to deploy. Like so. And remote should be easy to fit somewhere. Uh, well, it would work nicely for this. I need to sneak more batteries into this thing. It's only got two. Uh, but we can put the remote in here. Quiet, you. <laughs> Cross. Is there a gyro? Yes, I know. A couple of my ships are missing gyros, apparently. Um, which is weird, because that's part of my checklist. So I don't know how I missed it. But I will, that's one of my things on my to-do list this morning, is to fix those grids that are missing gyros. Nope, that doesn't work. I should prefer that. Too many emissives in there. Uh, I wonder what it would look like if I put Warfare Battery in the corner here. Oh yeah. We can get away with that.
that'll give us plenty of battery power. We've now got the remote control. We've got the thing. Let's turn out the lights. Thanks, H2O Mako. Thanks for the 200 bits. Ooh. Oh, I can do that. Cool. That means I should be able to do one there, too. Yeah. City down. Less blue. A little less green. Yeah. Am I with that? Uh, yeah, having the batteries in the legs, I guess, makes it vulnerable. If there was proper bar buried under the legs, then it'd make it even more vulnerable. But, uh... This base is not, like, something I'm realizing now that we've got effectively uh, what used to be called the smart turret mod. Um, there's really no point defending facilities with, like, it's really easy now to capture facilities. Because turrets can be taken out with auto-targeting just turrets and not hitting anything else. So, to me, the idea of trying to defend the bases with stuff that's on the base has kind of been defeated by Keen making it a little too easy. Um, so instead of that, ACS was actually well prepped unintentionally for this. Uh, instead of that, ACS uses drones to protect itself because drones can't be as easily eliminated and they're a much more variable threat. Uh, launching lights. Yeah, actually, yeah, let's do launching lights. I don't normally do things like that, but yeah. I think in this instance... Uh, let's just do a single row down the middle. Nope. Nope. Rotate the light correctly. Uh, we'll do them in red. But we'll do our radius way, way down. I could do them in orange. Maybe that sort of colour. Uh, decoys do not work against the ACS drones. Does that look weird at a distance? Yeah, there's a bit... They've got a bit too much range. Although, they're going to be blinking, so it may not be as big an issue. Uh, so, blink length. I mean, blink interval. Uh, let's go with... Three seconds. Uh, blink offset. Yep, 10%. This one will be 20. This one will be 30. Uh, 
This one will be 50. And this one will be 60. Yeah. I think that's worked pretty well. Uh, the copy paste thing with build vision is open up the menu by control scroll down home to activate copying insert to copy everything page up to copy to I uh, insert to select everything page up to copy and then uh, it's page down to paste which you can do without opening it fully you can do it from this view Eisen, I will eventually corrupt you to know and to enjoy making lighting. <laughs> eventually. Yeah, being able to copy-paste lighting settings makes it a lot more... A lot more practical to do interesting lighting because you, you've you got more... Like, it takes less time, so you're more likely to do more of it. Ah, oh, I missed the mozzie. Dang it. <laughs> now to only beg... Keen for RTX so we can make really neat screenshots. Drago, do you know what I'd love? If Keen brought back the depth info for Ansel. I want to use depth of field in Ansel so much. It was so good for screenshots when we had depth of field, but they've Keen don't have the information provided to Ansel anymore, but they used to. I don't know why they got rid of it. I, I, like, I don't know why it broke. Like, why it's a thing that doesn't exist that used to exist. Because it existed at the start of Survival Impossible. That's how I did the Survival Impossible initial thumbnail. Well, I, yeah, Drago, I've poked, I've poked Keen on Twitter about a, a couple of times before and got no response, but that was before um, Keen Arda's time, so maybe he'd uh, know why. But yeah, it's so incredibly useful for making Space Engineers look good. And I'd, when it first came out, I dreamed of doing... Um, I dreamed of doing light echoes fully shot in Ansel with depth of field effects or as much as I could so that I could do focus adjustments, do focus pulls and do things like that to really, really add to the dynamism of all the images, all the footage and stuff. But it, uh, it got removed and so I couldn't. Say it. Uh, I haven't. Yeah, I I bet Zoc would want it. <laughs> uh, or <laughs> would would Zoc want it? If if it got re-added, wouldn't that just give more? Make Zoc have to spend even more time making the screenshots and things. <laughs> Rather than speeding it up. I can't fit another light down here. Oh, well. There's enough light. Oh, wait. These go further. Further. Get the light down in. Yeah. 
It's true. He does like it, even though it would cost him a lot of time. That is true. Uh, text and images. And we'll go with... What shall we use? Might just use the bliss again. Oh wait, no. Use that. Yeah, I don't want to use Reshade Lohan. Like, unless it interfaced with Ansel to give me those extra tools, I don't I don't have any interest in using Reshade. All I see from um, people who, like, DE uses Reshade and constantly seems to be turning it off because it's broken something. Or it's broken. Uh, and I've got no interest in futzing around with stuff like that to... Yeah. I want my stuff to just work. <laughs> You're watching ACS TV. Totally not a propaganda network. This is too bright in here now. Yeah, that's more like it. Uh, I'm tempted to paint these blue to bring some color in here. So that might have been too much. Maybe that. Oh wait, that's a, that already goes blue on it. Yeah. And I could also do the lights in blue. Does that draw too much attention to them? No, I'm not doing Retro Future. I I really don't use Retro Future much at all. It is a bit too much with the shiny. Okay, so we need to redo this floor, and I th think... Actually tempted to try carbon fiber. Nope. Already hate it. <laughs> I almost never use carbon fiber. It's such a uh Yeah. It is not my kind of thing. Oh, not 10 meters. Uh, let's put that at like three. Yeah. Wait, do I even need the... Hmm. Maybe I will just leave them white. Because I've actually, I've got so much light bleed from everywhere else that I kind of don't need lights in here. Like there's, from the light below and everything like that. 
Let's see what happens if I get rid of all the lights in here. Remember, my headlights are off. Yeah, we don't need lights in here. Okay. Well, that works. Easy. Okay. Close door. Close door. Ah, uh, can't the yeah the computer control room has no lights in it. <laughs> I'd have to go and fix up all of the other exterior lights to reduce their range. I'm not sure I can be bothered. It's probably not this light causing the problem. It'll be. Yeah, the problem will be the ones that are in the drone bay. Those lights will be the problem. The ones on this wall here. And also these underneath. These probably don't need to be 10 meters. Uh, let's try them at 6. Uh, but these are... Basically, these will be lighting up the space above them as well. Uh, which is unavoidable, unless I get rid of them. It feels a bit more moody. Yeah, yeah I've got lights in the showers, eyes. There we go. Now it feels a bit more dim. That creates the right mood. I'm happy with that. Uh, then we'll close these doors. really happy with this. Uh, it is a lot bigger than I like to make these things, but unfortunately I think to have something that's a believable drone printer uh, it kind of needed to be. Like this one, this one is a believable one, but I used a kind of it doesn't actually have a printer, it's just like a repair bay. But I wanted something that I could actually spawn the drones. Like, ideally, where I'd like to draw... I'd like to spawn them down here, but I don't think that's a good idea. I think I could spawn them just about here. Actually, I could spawn them here and give them an initial velocity that pushes them out. I think I can do that. Yeah. I kind of want to put searchlights on this thing. I'm not sure where. So I only really have spots on one side. Yeah, I won't. Uh, Eisen Pav's used some of my, like he's hacked up some of my other designs for, um, making drone bases, making his bases. 
But this one sort of is a drone facility as well. But yeah, the, the thing that dictated the size of this new base was the pillars and system I used to lift it off the ground. And the fact that I want drones to actually spawn in this launch area. Because um, I think if I can get that bit to work as we approach the as you approach and attack the base, I can have the base repeatedly spawning in new drones right on top of you until you take out its um, AI control module, which I th think should make for a really interesting and difficult battle. Now, the thing that I need to add to this, which the thing I'm going to add to this is in mo in a few at least a few of the loot containers, there are going to be a cert there's going to be a cert thruster loot. So, this is going to be the only installation currently where you can get thrusters. So, there is a, at least a somewhat of an incentive to not just annihilate this thing from the distance. That's the idea. Because this thing is going to be the new war mode. I'm going to remove the war mode. And that's sort of the next thing I need to start working on is the behaviors for this. Because the behaviors for this are going... If I can get them nutted out relatively quickly... I might even make this go live today so that it, TFE and I can play with it tonight. This afternoon. Oh, wait. If I do this... One search light over there. Oh, yeah. That's good enough. Add some interest... Will the welders actually be on and repairing damage? Uh, I mean, I can turn them on. Or I could put a sensor to turn them on. But there's not really any damage they can do meaningful help to. Uh, so I'm not too fast. which way I do that. That's not a big deal to me. Oh yeah, I should set this to target enemy grids, shouldn't I? Let's just do it through the menu. Try doing it that way. Control panel search light. Enable idle movement on. Target meteors off. Target missiles off. Target small ships on. Large ships on. Characters on. Stations on. Neutrals. Friends. Enemies only. Yeah. Cool. Uh, I'll be back in just a sec. I need to take a quick bio break and then I think I can start, I can do the final checklist for this base. We'll load up the cargo ship save and fix up the cargo ships that are apparently I uh, stuffed up. And then start doing the behaviours for this thing and removing the behaviours from the other bases. But I'll only do that once I've added this one in. So we're back in just a moment.
will the batteries on the base last long enough? Yes. Absolutely. Four, five fully charged batteries on this would last... Does it actually give me an idea? There you go. Eight days. So yes, that'll be fine. <laughs> I think... I think... Uh, as soon as you get over 24 hours of game time that something will remain powered. Kinda don't mind. Ah, uh, no, it does not matter that the turrets aren't piped. Nope. I don't pipe most of them. Because I found that I could do much more interesting designs if I didn't, and it doesn't particularly harm the interactivity with the base, ship, whatever, if I don't pipe the turrets. Alright, so we need now some checking of things. Uh, do, 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 do. Mods. So combat systems. I'm using a different thing, but I haven't opened anything in it yet. So I gotta open all the things. Uh, do, 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 do. Build checklist. Copy paste to check integrity. Nothing fell out. Good sign. Uh, should I make these legs longer? I might need to do that. So let's do this. And do this. Now there might be something else you notice about this base which is different to all the others. It doesn't have a way to get to it from the ground. Um, I'm not sure I want to fix that. Honestly? Yeah, I could could just do a ladder, couldn't I? Is a cheap way to fix it. Just where would I put the ladder? It's no real. There's nowhere um, that's sensible to add a ladder because I've used up these blocks on the front. Could have like an emergency exit back here, I suppose. Uh, it's this side. It's going to be tricky. I wonder if this is going to work. Okay. 
Can you climb up this? Yep. Okay, that works. We have emergency access. <laughs> cool thing if the door is open you can't is closed you can't open it. Yep. I mean I could I could do whoops. This have the door that way. But I feel like this is an emergency exit, not an, uh, not an ingress point, so um, we'll stick with it that way. Ah, uh, that's what I feared. What? Okay, I'm so confused. This copied? Oh. I know what's happened. I undid and got the ladder back. But the ladder's still... But it just put the ladder on top of the other ladder. better. Having at least some semblance of connection to the grid. Uh, what is the ADA? Uh... And if you're talking about, like, occupational health and safety stuff, uh, in the state I'm in, that would be work cover. Uh, yeah, as in, I've, I've started liking having the neon tubes behind the ladder to give it some extra structural support appearance. Oh, Americans with Disabilities Act, I see. Um, yeah, those rules don't, at least in Australia, most of those rules don't apply to combat facilities or combat things. Because uh, you, you can't really have an accessible tank. I'm sure the American, American Dental Association might have a thing to, to, to say as well. Yes. Your supplies of toothpaste are inadequate. It's fine. It's the future. They have wheelchairs with thrusters. Indeed. Ah, uh, cool. So, uh, copy paste to check integrity. Has a remote control? Yes, we know it does. Is it named remote control or is it named remote control 2? Let me just check. Should just be 1 because I didn't add more than 1. Just remote control. Um, doesn't need a gyro. Happy with the lighting. Happy with the exterior because I want mainly the searchlight and just those blinky lights, not having too much else. Don't need to worry about grav generator range. Don't need to do that. Uh, data pads to loot. Um, hmm. I do need to get around to doing my random data pad loot collection. Because we've got, I've gotten a few more. A few of them have kind of missed the point that I was hoping to get at, which is these are generic things that could fit everywhere. Uh, but a good chunk of them do seem like they'll 
like they'll fit well. Uh, can... So what I need to do now is make two versions of this grid, one for space and one for Atmo. So we need a copy. Also, I need to name this thing. Uh, Tommaso, there's a channel in my Discord server called Datapad Stories, uh, where I've asked for submissions for datapads that are generic in nature. So advertisement, email correspondence between people, that sort of stuff. But I don't want anything that implies this person is on a ship, this person is in a station, because I want these to work across all stations, all ships. So it has to be something that doesn't say, I can't believe I died aboard this ship, <laughs> sort of thing, because it doesn't fit with what I'm going for. Uh, what Some of the... Uh, and... I don't really want stuff that's sorry I'm not coming home sort of thing because there are no dead bodies here. Um, these people don't know they're doomed. Uh, but one good example uh, is another tour. The title, another tour, body. After reading the heading to this message, you probably know what I'm going to say. The money's just too good. I know I'll miss an another year of Betty's childhood, but this will allow her to go to university later on. I miss you both, but especially you. I've sent some pictures from this place, kind of pretty at sunset. Though that might have to be changed. Um, I love getting the pictures of you all. I almost feel like I'm there. I just wish there were some pictures without Mark in them. It makes me uneasy. Like, that's, that's just someone talking to their partner who's not with them. And that can happen anywhere. And I, I really like that. And the random advertisement ones that look like it's just spam messages that have been sent, those sorts of things. I, I like having those things as just a bit of flavor text that you can find around the place. Uh, now I need to figure out how to get this text to the right scale. <laughs> For what it needs to fit in. And let's pad it down to there. Get rid of the red. Uh, yeah, cultists' holy book is a good data pad because, you know, there could be a cultist anywhere. Um, so the idea behind these generic data pads actually is pretty much Eisen's fault in a good way. Because Eisen submitted, as part of the previous data pad submissions, here some excerpts from a book that he started writing. Uh, if you've come across the Book of Tohan, they're his work. Um, Eisen also being responsible for Scavenger Hunt's storyline. Um, 
And I really liked the idea that I could put these anywhere. Like I can put those data pads on any ship, on any station, and they make sense. I really liked that it was just a chapter of a book someone was reading in bed. Um, that sort of thing. So I wanted to encourage people to come up with even more broad strokes, things that we could find. Because the more there are, the more little bits of interest or you can, you know, try and collect yourself a bit of a library, that sort of stuff, a bit of fun. Uh, Lucas, is that the one that's, is, is the data pad thing the one that's in your, on the wiki? Because that's the one I'm planning on using. Because I haven't actually done the data pads yet. I was planning on using the proper data pad randomizer and create the pack that way. Uh, but this base needs a name. We've got operations outpost, research base, research base. Drone repair facility. Might just call this drone operations. So I think drone operations sends the clear message for what's going to happen, what this base is going to do. O3 will be my Atmo one, and O4 will be my space one. See ya, Eric Bord. Um, Necrovore, I also would encourage recipes as submissions, yes, because uh, recipes have that sort of generic quality to them as well that I think is well suited to the purpose of these things. Alright, so next step is adding all the loots. Uh, I want to do at mode loot. And a bunch of the cargo containers. Because I want this to be relatively juicy if you manage to capture it. Because it will be... It will be pain. Uh, Tomaso, there's no real way to do a proper redaction looking thing in the data pads, I didn't think. Or I didn't think there was a way to do it. So I'm not sure how you would go about doing redactions. Because I'm not sure the data pads like special characters much. 
And you are very much limited to a thousand characters as well. Which is not much. To be fair though, most people playing Space Engineers are probably not going to be in a mood to read more than a thousand characters when they find something, so it's probably fair. Also, I just did the wrong loot on those. I need to do them again. Um, yeah, I don't think, I don't think just dashes or just X's replacing something. I don't know, I'd have to see it. I'm, I'm not convinced that would sell being redacted as much as it, was, as it would just look like a whole bunch of X's in a document. Um, but I could easily be wrong on that one. It just, it doesn't, it doesn't feel right to me. as I said. Doesn't mean I'm right about it. Okay, so that's all of those done. Now I need to get the turrets. Grab all of them. Crank their range up. Idle movement off. And now we need to give them ammo. And once I've given all these ammo, I should probably copy paste this and replace the other one. Because I've done stuff that needs to be done to both and I don't want to do it twice. No, that's not what I want to do. No, don't. Nope. 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 Don't want to put a thousand man. Oh, wait a second. I need to stop doing this. I need to stop using these, the old ammo. Bad splitsy. Stop doing the bad thing that you shouldn't be doing. two, then this one. Um, Lucas, if you're still watching, do you think this is enough space that I could spawn one of my small drones to shoot out? We'll find out, even if it's not. Uh, let's pop in... Grinder. Welder. Power kits. Construction components. Checking some steel plate. Pop out this one, because it shouldn't be there. Oh, not that way anyway. And I need to paint these. Yeah, Lucas, that, that, yeah, that was my plan if it didn't work, was to um, spawn it near the entrance. In a way that would look like it would uh, in, so that it happened that quick cool right, I will 
Give it a go. Yeah, red redacted stuff's a bit weird. I can see reasons why it wouldn't exist. I can see reasons why someone might have gotten hold of a redacted document. Um, I think more focus on the fun stuff like uh, advertisements and the like. Okay, so we got stuff in all those bits. I should... Give the weapon racks some gear. So we've got ammo in all the guns, we've got all the doors closed, I think. Grid name is set, antenna range is set. Let's just check turret. Yep, all have ammo. Grid name is set, so let's delete this one. Copy this. And paste. And replace the number. And rename. We're good. Then I can change all of the cargo to the Space loot, which is eight. Cool. Um, so I've thought about the whole targeting mechanics with the turrets thing and whether I would want them to target specific blocks or not with the bases and with the cargo ships. The problem I see is it's very easy unless I set it to target propulsion or like my three options really are propulsion, default or power systems. Because if we have any of those, if we have any of the other options, like if we say targeted weapons, that's not going to stop the player character from getting in. And it's not going to stop an unarmed ship approaching and sneaking in. Which for certain facilities might well be interesting, but probably too easily exploitable to really be interesting more than once. So I tend to just leave it on default because I kind of want it to smash stuff out. Um, because I don't think... I don't think it adds much in the way of interest to change it. Yeah, Steampunker, you're, you're right. For a redacted document, you could start with, hey, got the thing you wanted, don't blame me, it's so redacted, I pulled a lot of strings to even get in, to get even this. Yeah. That gives it some internal justification, but it also then dramatically limits how much you can even write. Uh, cool. So, let's... Theory, that should be... 
everything. Why? Why has copy operation failed? Thank you. Export. Copy. Export. Um, now, we go to blah, 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 export. So what I need to do now is create a behavior for these. Um, which will need to be unique because they're going to do something special and I need to create a new drone spawn group just for these. So spawn groups, drones, space. Oh, I don't want to open it in notepad. Uh, there we go. All uh, right, so we've got some groups down the bottom here. Okay, we don't want to spawn a fight, right? <laughs> that would be a bit, a bit bad. Um, uh, let's create a new section. It's my commenting out thing. That's right. Huh. Yeah. Drone swarms. Uh, <laughs> All right. Since you guys are talking in chat, let me show you. Uh, where is it? I keep getting asked about this, so I figured I would go and write a review on it. My review of SnowRunner. SnowRunner was overall a disappointment for me. It has some fun with the muddy driving and the rollovers, but it's ultimately ruined by the terrible multiplayer that has endless issues from bugs to gameplay decisions that just don't make sense. From forcing the host to be on the same map as anyone else just so they can refuel, to crossplay making the multiplayer incredibly unstable. If you like driving games, you'll probably get a decent amount of fun from it, but beware, if you want to play multiplayer, there's a very good chance that the fun will be ruined and you'll be left feeling frustrated and disappointed you spent so much time with the game. Hopefully, uh, that clarifies my feelings on SnowRunner. And for a swarm, let's start with this locust swarm. I think that's a good place to start. Uh, so, this will be a rival AI spawn, true, yes. Well, that should be fine. Now I just have to pick what drones I want in it. So, um, for this swarm... Base swarm four A, and I'll have what I'll do is I'll do a four A four B, a five A five B, and the number will will indicate how many of those drones drones are going to spawn, uh, and then the letter just being the what drones are in it. Oh no! Wait, how do I do the random ones again? What was I doing for that? Uh cargo ship spawns. Uh 
Yeah. Oh, right, that's in my manipulation profile. Where's my manipulation profile? Spawn conditions. Yes, prefab spawning mode, random selected indexes. So we can just do a four, a five, and a six. That is a better way of doing this. I need to remember to do these things proper. Do these things properly. I also probably need to increase the size of the font in this, which is done by not the standard shortcut. Of control mouse wheel. There we go. Now you guys can actually see it and read it. Which helps, <laughs> I imagine. Uh, Close that. Yeah, Lucas. Um, Black Shadow is actually the reason I've I've got VS Code. I blame her. <laughs> I was convinced. Slowly, people have worn me down. I've given in. Succumbed to the peer pressure. Uh, da, 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 da. Hey. Hey. What just do? Two options for each type per drone, maybe. So this doesn't get a ridiculously out of hand. <laughs> I'll... Lucas, I'm glad that I wasn't the only one that needed to be dragged kicking and screaming into using more modern things. Do you know what the the tipping point was for me? Notepad++ looks terrible in dark mode. <laughs> I was entirely driven to the change by aesthetics. A, B, C, D... Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the way this is going to work is the first two drones listed will be zero and one, and it will randomly pick between one of those two. The next two, it'll randomly pick between them. The next two randomly pick between those two, and you'll get four drones, but the mixture of those drones will be random. The real people, the real reason people switch editors. Themes. That's true. Uh, so, what drones shall we use? That feels just a bit too zoomy. Yeah, that's better. It felt just really big. I, my monitor is large-ish so having it at that size was a little uncomfortably large so we'll grab the firefly uh, and start replacing these and then i'll also so firefly or locust on the first one i'll probably replace a lot of these locust options Uh, 
so I just I'll just keep grabbing the drones. So I got firefly, fruit fly, and man, am I hating my fruit flies? Why did I? Those things have caused us no end of grief in AA so far. They're stupid auto cannons. Fruit fly. Locust already got down there. Space wasp. And I think that might be most of them. Fruit fly, locust, space wasp, monarch. These are supposed to be nasty, so. Monarch. So there's a Mark II of the Firefly, a Mark II of the Locust, and a Mark II of the Monarch and Space Wasp. Okay, so there's a Mark II of all except for the Fruit Fly. Okay, so what I could do is go Firefly... Actually, no, let's let's not do that. I was about to do, you get a Firefly, but it might be the Mark I or the Mark II, but no, I think it's more interesting if you can get a mixture of fireflies and other things. So how many have we got here? We need eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, we got Monarch, Space Wasp, Fruit Fly, Locust Mark II, Locust, Firefly Mark II. Let's, let's do a Mark II Monarch. But oh, actually, space wasp mark two for this one. Yeah. So these are tiny, all of my drones are tiny, so that's why they'll fit in that launch bay. Uh, but these, this big group won't actually spawn from that launch bay. They're going to be triggered in a different way. I might just start with the single one rather than fleshing this out fully, because I'd like to try and implement this, test it, and then I can always expand by adding the other stuff later. So that's our base swarm. We need that. Next thing we need is uh, behaviors. We need to create a behavior for this new base. Let's just add the installation spawn group though, which should go into Atmo High and... Uh, could go into Medium probably actually. Hmm. Thanks, Zero Disclosure. Thanks for nine months. Thank you very much. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, I'll have to do it this way. Lunar Medium. Atmo Medium. So, we're going to create a new spawn group for this thing. And this spawn group is going to have its own special conditions. Oops. Swarm base spawns. So, this will be... If we grab other ones, prefabs, lunar bases will be 04. Atmospheric bases is 03. And currently at Atmos, let's grab that. So I don't mess up the name. Oh, 
Oh, right, yeah, I do want a medium one, actually. Because what I want to do is I want to create multiple versions of this base. Uh, as you get up to the higher difficulty, you'll get a worse spawn group of this base that has more things around it, but also that spawns nastier things. Yes, this works. Um, so what's my manipulation profile for this? Manipulation profile. I've got manip atmo installation, which does what? Okay, so that just does the loot. Cool. So what I need to add now is the standings impact. And the standings is done. I can't remember how. <laughs> Uh, so we go down to spawn group, spawning conditions. And we want... Uh, is that just standings? Nope. Uh... Fact, is it faction relations or something? General. Chance ceiling, four static grid, rotate, spawn, random cargo. Uh, uh, I've used this somewhere else. I just can't remember where I've used it. Oh, I used it in a trigger. Is it actually a spawn condition? Oh no. Maybe it's a trigger condition. That's annoying. How would I do that then? Ah, oh, minimum reputation. Here we go. Reputation. That's what we want. Max reputation minus 1350. So until you've fought with a cert a bit, you will not get a reputation below that. So you will be able to, these won't spawn. Uh, these bases are intended for once you've fought a cert a fair bit, then they can spawn. The threat score minimum, I think for them should probably be a bit higher than the general stuff. So let's put it up to 650 um, and put the reputation there. Hey, is that the Jack? Um, yeah. That should be fine. Is there a thing for enabling it? So there often is for other stuff. Use player reputation there. Yeah. Just set that to true. Uh, cool. Threat level check range, yes, yes, yes. That's all fine. So in theory, I should have to have a reputation that's very low, a threat score that's relatively high, and then this base can spawn. Now this base needs to have its own special behavior, which is AI swarm base atmo. Atmo medium. Okay, so then I need to create that behavior. Cool. Let's copy this quickly and I'll put it into the lunar bases as well. So we've got that. Oh, hang on. Uh... This should be Lunar Drone Operations, and this one should be Atmo Drone Operations, so that they don't double up on the subtype IDs, because that would be bad, and the thing doesn't like it. Okay, done. Done. Uh, next up is... Behaviors. 
So behaviors we need to do are, yes, Grazob, the madman on the mood wa moon was Luna, indeed. Uh, which feels like less of a pun and more of just a statement, given that that's where the whole loony thing comes from, is that your behaviours were controlled by the phase of the moon or something? Wasn't it? Uh, so, we've got... Might grab the medium behaviour and copy it and then... Yeah. Then rename it. So, copy, paste... AI swarm base lunar behavior. I didn't come up with the language, I just misuse it. Fair, I guess. Fair, yeah. All right, we get rid of the war and peace. We don't want those. We don't want these. We do want the trigger prox far and near which we're just going to leave and steal from the regular bases for now uh, but what we also will need to do base support calls yeah they can stay damage can stay and then we need to create a new trigger so the new trigger for this is going to be um, the one that gives us our special attacks so this is going to be AI swarm base uh, drone swarm lunar medium. Yeah. Trigger. That's getting long. Still works though. How is threat score determined? Threat score is determined by a summation of the blocks that you own within the radius that it's checked those blocks have different threat scores applied to them turrets have more and armor blocks have less that sort of thing um the exact numbers i don't know kind of don't matter it just means the more stuff you have the more threat you represent the more nasty acs will be um my suspicion is over time people will shift to their, like, you kind of will adapt your level of threat to actually make sense with your threat score. Because the more you get attacked, the more turrets you'll build, the more your threat score will match to what it should be. Uh, yeah, it's part of MES. And yes, the more LCDs you have, the more threatening you are. There is that too. Okay, so we've got our trigger procs far, action procs far, that can all stay, trigger procs near, that can stay, action procs near can stay, uh, trigger procs war, that can go, because we don't have war mode anymore. Same with enemy, because these bases don't even spawn if you're not an enemy. Uh, trigger damage we were keeping, and then we've got our spawners. Okay. And there's TFE dropping the link to the threat score calculation thing. Um, so, I want a timer trigger for this one. So let's just copy this one. Go down the bottom and add this trigger damage. This trigger will be called this. Actually, I need to rename that. Um, so we'll go Lunar Drone Swarm. Swarm Base. Medium Trigger. Yeah, sure. Stick with that for now. I'll probably get it later. I'm sure I will. Uh, let's 
So what's that? This is a timer trigger. No, it's a player near trigger. It is a player near trigger. Sorry. Why are these got such tiny tabs? Oh, there are spaces there. Evil, evil spaces. Uh, so, target distance for this is 15 kilometers. Minimum cooldown. I will set it to be... You know what? Three minutes. Why not? Oh, actually, this is for testing, so we're going to have it stupid frequent. Uh, so let's make it... Every 30 seconds. Up to every... 90 seconds. And this will trigger an action. Let's grab an action so I can be lazy about this. Uh, so this action we'll call AI... Wait, what? I just did something wrong then. I want to hear. So this will be Lunar, Drone, Swarm, Base, M, Action. So the idea that I'm um, working on here is these minimum, the minimum cooldown and maximum cooldown will be what control how frequently these nasty drones spawn. So these are not controlled by any action of you, except for the fact that you've gone and annoyed ACS to the point that this might spawn. Now, the chance of this base spawning is going to be pretty low because it's going to have to spawn as the base that spawns when there are all the other easy and medium ones able to be spawned. So the chances are going to be low, but once it spawns, you're going to know it. Um, because it's going to hurt. <sighs> I'm not sure, Gruz. Should he be, should TFE be Tazzy Lucas or should he be Tazzy Kapak? Or Tazzy Amaru? He listens as well as Capac does. Um, <laughs> both. <laughs> oh, laggy Amaru. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to cop it in our recording this afternoon, I think. Luca Pacus. Oh. True, he does talk more than Capac, that is true. Uh so I'm planning on using where are they? I need the base chat. I was planning on using the war mode chats um for this so because now that i'm not now that i'm getting rid of war mode i've got i've got these extra things that i've already done uh which can be reutilized because i do think that i should be broadcasting out that you're about to get attacked by a swarm of drones Uh, yeah, Devoke. So the idea I have in mind is that this special base that we built today will spawn and then based on a timer that varies between, say, five minutes and three hours, and it will be random a random interval between those two, it will, con it will spawn a wave of drones. And that wave of drones will be, depending on whether this is the medium version, the hard version, or the boss version, will be limited to four... Probably four, six, or eight drones as the maximum. 
in each wave. Because uh, I think more than eight drones would probably start running into performance-related issues with spawning and controlling that many, um, and them crashing into each other. Uh, so the idea behind this base is instead of the war mode that exists for the bases at, the, at present, where the bases will go into war mode, will start sending more drones out after you, now you get a special base that does that. And the reason I think that's a more engaging behavior is that now you have a specific target and you know that target is well defended. So you know to take out that thing that keeps sending drones to attack your base, you're going to have to arm up and build something worthy of taking it on. But once you take it out, you're clear, you're kind of safe again for a while until the next one manages to spawn. And they will be relatively rare, so the chances of having this happen is low enough that I think it'll be a fun experience rather than an overwhelming one. That's my hope, anyway. Okay. Capac, the palindrome of destruction. <laughs> yes. Uh, so now I need to make another spawner. Uh, I wouldn't, Laws. <laughs> I have no idea what Corona's drift is. Chat. Let's set this spawner up. Should we named this? Oh, Coronas Rift, not Drift. Whoops. <laughs> Still don't know it. Right layer spawn true. You spawn true. Starts ready true. Spawn groups. Where is our spawn swarm four? Minimum distance is going to be, let's say, 500 meters, maximum distance a kilometer. So these are going to spawn close to the base. Which does mean they're going to have some challenges with pathing all their way 14 kilometers over to you, but eh, what can I do? Um, Lucas, is there something I could do to enhance the ability of the drones managing to navigate their way effectively to the target? Or am I just seeing the them struggle on the moon because... TFE and I have left so much junk around. Um, because they don't see like the war mode spawns don't seem to have actually made it to us. Well, I haven't I haven't used spectator to check how they're struggling, but they seem to kind of. Uh, Navigation-wise, they seem to be struggling. You see them bobbing up and down and flying up and down, and I'm wondering whether I set something funny in their navigation stuff that shouldn't have been done. Oh, actually, while I got you here, one of the fixes I wanted to do was... Where's drone? At mode drone behavior. Uh, is it? I think I want to increase this. So people have been saying that my drones and we've been experiencing what looks like my drones doing ran, uh, ramming attacks. And I didn't think I'd set mine up to do that. Um, I didn't think the fighter behavior did ramming attacks. Or does it?
I was wondering whether I needed more slowdown distance on things, and that's why um, it was accidentally happening. Yeah, so I thought maybe I need to set my strafe up differently so that it gives a bit more leeway to prevent it happening. Because uh, I didn't really want my drones to do ramming attacks. I'd look at the strafe settings. Yeah, so the minimum increase the minimum target distance because I did used to have it higher. But I wanted them, so I was kind of trying to find this balance and see if I could hit the sweet spot of I want the drones to get in range of small grid weaponry with AI targeting, like standard targeting, uh, because I didn't want the drones to have a standoff behavior that really made it frustrating for the player. Lower your distance cutoff. That dictates how far it's allowed to travel from start straight to end state. Okay, so maybe if I set that to 150 and keep the minimum target distance at like 250. Right, or maybe even 100. So they just do a 100 meter long strafe and then turn around. Ah, uh, okay. Because that was higher than my target distance, so that's probably why they looked like they were trying to strafe through. Okay, cool. Uh, so that's the small Atmo drone. Uh, where's my Luna drone? Wait, I think I may use the same drone behavior for both. Base Atmo, Base Luna, Base Luna, small space drone. Here we go, small space drone. Yeah, maybe 50 meters a second was too high for the distances as well. Uh, cool. Yeah, and that's and that's why I've set like the ideal planet altitude to 450 meters because if it was at 600, that makes it really hard to hit them. I'm going to increase this explosion range to see if I can wipe out more of the drone when they explode. Because I do want the drones to basically disintegrate on death because they don't give you any resources anyway. Uh, much better if they disintegrate on death. With a nice big blammo! Okay, so that's one of the fixes I wanted to do today. That's done. Good. Uh, we can close those. Uh, so, back to the behavior. We have base swarm 4. Minimum distance, 500 meters. How... Use relative spawn position. Ah. That's what I need to change, because I want this to spawn above the base. Because I'm thinking I might change where the drones spawn in general, so they spawn above the base that calls them in. Um, rather than what they do currently, which is spawn somewhere off in the distance. Which, again, doesn't seem to make the engagement with the player as interesting as I thought it would when I initially tested it with just a single base. As soon as you capture a couple of bases, it makes it really difficult to know where they're going to attack. Which makes them less fun, I think. Uh, so we're looking at here the... Uh, Where am I going to find this information? Spawn. See you, Rush. Uh, oh, hang on, I can set minimum altitude. Ah. That's probably a safer way to do it, isn't it? If I just want them to spawn overhead... Is it? Uh, 
Use relative spawn position. This tag specifies if the spawn position should be relative to the NPC remote control block. Otherwise, the spawn will be in a random location within a min-max distance from the grid. Drop the min-max distance and give a safe altitude. Okay. So, if I do this... If the minimum altitude is 500 meters and the minimum distance is also 500 meters, it should, or if the max distance were, like it should basically spawn above it 500 to a kilometer above. Like the, the cone that forms where this, where those two values randomly intersect should be basically a cone above the base. It won't be directly above, but it'll be kind of. Yeah, I thought relative would be the one for the drone base spawn. Which I'll have to work on soon. Uh... So, do you think this should be safe, Lucas? Based on your experience? Might put the max altitude up higher. I assume... Wait. Distance would include vertical distance, wouldn't it? Or does it not? Like, is distance only horror planetary surface distance? Okay, it's planetary surface distance. I'm guessing by your response there. Cool. Distance is forward in a random direction. Okay, yeah, so based if the remote control block is oriented with gravity, forward in a random direction will be effectively a flat plane extending out uh, at a ra radius of maximum distance 200 meters from the remote control. So something, because the remote control's back here, 200 meter radius plane lined up with gravity there. Sweet. Okay, so that's cool. So these will spawn roughly overhead, anywhere up to 1,500 meters in altitude. Actually, let's go higher. Let's go a minimum of 1,000 and a maximum of 2,500. I don't want to go too high because then it will go outside gravity. <laughs> See you, Lucas. Thanks for your help, as always. Thanks for making this so I can even do this stuff. Uh, right. We should have a system we can test. Save changes before quitting. Yes. In theory, I have done everything that needs to be done to test this. Let's find out how wrong I am. Uh, hang on. Uh, that's... Lunar medium behavior. Swarm base lunar M behavior. Oops. Don't need that. Do I rename this behavior? No. I didn't. That would help. Okay. Uh, ACS. Test. Load. Uh, yeah, so Mark, exactly. They will spawn closer and they will spawn di almost directly overhead. Uh, instead of spawning at a distance and then closing on you and you... What I was finding was because of that spawning off in the distance three or four kilometers away, um, the drones were distracting you from your target rather than adding threat to your target. So when, TFI, when TFE and I went and attacked a base, we would have to, as soon as we saw a drone spawn, stop what we were doing, look at where the drone was, try and figure out its heading, 
and then decide whether we were going to attack or change headings. That's not what I wanted the drones to do. And although an interesting try, uh, thing to have to figure out, it wasn't a fun thing to figure out. Uh, it kind of distracted from what you were doing, which you were finding more fun. Uh, so what I'd like it to do instead is when you attack a base, you will then see drones come from near that base or directly overhead. So you get attacked you will have to deal with that additional threat, which I think is better. Uh, let's check if this spawn is eligible. Wait, which? Hmm. Something I'm going to have to get used to with VS Code is how to tell if something is saved or not. Says so three are unsaved. Uh, anyway, I need new text file. Okay, so my threat score is low. No, it's not. It's 900. Uh, oh, wait, what am I saying? No, these are there. Uh, why? What's my standing? Minus 1480, so that should be an eligible spawn. Why no spawn? Listing post support ground stockpile biohazard habitation lunar listing post. Okay. Why? Installations lunar medium. Lunar drone operations medium. My threat level is adequate. My faction reputation is adequate. Um, that's fine. We've got the behavior. Uh, why? Uh, I didn't even get an air er an error on it. Just annoying. Mm. Is there a mod that adds the drones that actively go after you while you are just chilling like survival? Maybe. That's what this is... ACS was supposed to do that, but it wasn't doing it. Um, this is fixing that. But ACS is meant to do it when you're in a position that you should be able to defeat it. I don't know how to figure out why this isn't working. Let's start at the beginning. Let's get rid of the Atmo stuff and not deal with that for the moment. Don't need chat. Spawn conditions. Don't need that. Don't need that. Don't need that. All right. That's separate. So we should be able to get this spawned. Why isn't it spawning? Do I need to specify a minimum reputation? Reputation. Use player faction Check for players. 
suppose I should probably set that for multiplayer purposes. Check radius is 15 kilometers. Uh, no, don't want to worry about that. I'll set this. The default value is minus 1501. So that should be fine. This tag allows but the maximum reputation must have. For yeah. So the reputation part should be fine. Why is this not an option? Let's check if the prefab is there. Prefab, lunar bases, whoops, lunar bases. NPC ACS drone operations 04. NPC ACS drone operations 04. <laughs> Why? Um, What is not working? We have the behavior. One base, Luna, and behavior. Yep. We have a trigger prox var. We have a trigger prox near. We have the core Luna cargo ship. We have that. Yes. Yes. And then this trigger does exist. And that calls an action that does exist. And that action calls a spawner that does exist. Hmm. So what's not working here? It doesn't usually make any difference, but because I'm struggling and it might give me more time to think of what's <laughs> going wrong here, I'm just going to restart the game. I think I saved the file. Like, I think that symbol means saved. I think that symbol means not saved. And all of these are saved. Like, this scrapyard ideas thing is separate. Yeah, like, this is a trivia thing I'm working on for the Discord. That's the scrapyard ideas. There's four unsaved files, though. Now it says two? Maybe it didn't save. Mm, that's the function I don't like. Maybe I hadn't saved it properly. Um, let's hope this works. It's not fun when you get stymied like this. Uh, which version of VS am I using? Yes. I have no idea. A, a very recent one. At best guess, because I only installed it this week. Still the same stuff. Why? Uh, why? Uh, why you like this? Observation, outpost, habitation module, biohazard containment, stockpile, sport garrison, listening post, lunar observation post, lunar outpost, habitation module. Still no thing
Turret's current position within 500 meters, 900. Yes. What the heck? Why? Why, 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 why? I saved all my files then. The only two that... The only ones that aren't saved are... This that I'm messing with, the scrapyard ideas and the light echoes trivia file. I don't understand. All right, let's delete this and see if any of this is the, the issue. Remove the potential bit that might be a problem and then go from there. So I've read through it and I can't seem to fix it. Next step is delete stuff and see if I can fix it. Um, okay. Hmm. Still not there. Why? Let's get rid of that. <laughs> I tip my hat to you, sir, and I've thrown a ham sandwich at it already. Uh, but then I'd never have any ham sandwiches for Capac, and then I'd never be able to get him to do any recordings with me. No, I, I think I think for me the the motivation to not just give up comes entirely from I want this to work because I want to play with it. Still not there. Why is it still not there? Oh my gosh, I'm such an idiot. Planet requires Atmo. False. That's where I stuffed up. Okay, let's try this again. There's always something. There is always something. Okay. 
We're going to get it. Please show up. Yay! We can spawn it. Spawn planetary installation. Drone operations. Yep, that. Yep, there we go. Oh, here comes <laughs> here comes the first swarm. I should probably turn off starts ready for the swarms. Swarm spawns. I'm about to be in a whole world of pain. Wait, am I targetable by turrets? Yes. Okay, the, the base might need to spawn a little bit higher off the ground. <laughs> it's a little bit low. Wow, I'm being shot at by more than one turret. Interesting. That hasn't happened in a while. Concerning me the number of times that these drones are smashing into the ground. I think I might need to give them even better cheaty thrusters. Okay. Awesome. We got we got us we got the start of things working. So this needs to go up probably another Let's call it ten meters. And then for the behavior, this trigger needs to start ready false. Distance 200, minimum altitude that. And let's copy these and set up all my spawners to use the new method, at least for this base. I might do more of them soon. Okay, um, so in theory, where's that trigger? So that's ready falls, target distance that, minimum cooldown, maximum cooldown. So every 90 seconds at most we should get another wave coming. Okay. That does look like death. This is going to be uh it's gonna be a spicy meatball. So the next thing I want to try and do is um replace its damage behavior and see if we can manage to do a relative position spawn with a drone launching from the launch bay. Because it'll be I think it'll look really cool if we can get that working. So 
So there's our drone operations center. So it should be between 30 and 90 seconds before we get the first wave. And I'd like to, once we get the first wave, uh, follow those drones as they attempt to find me. Hello, timer. Uh, I need a stopwatch. Oh wait, nope. There we go. They've come. Uh, entity list. So here we go. We got a. Firefly Mark II, Fruitfly, Locust, and Monarch. Go, you can see it supporting the locust. <laughs> uh, they will be coming for me. They will absolutely be coming right for me. Because they should detect me as the only target in the area and so come straight after me. Okay, that was aggressive. With the orbit cam. What's it doing? Oh, there's round two. There should be another four drones. <laughs> Locust doing? Why isn't it shooting at me? There we go. That launched me a long way. <laughs> okay, next thing I want to change is this. I'm going to give them a bit more powerful stuff. I'm going to cheat their thrusters even more. Because I'm wondering if... Since I built these actually for space, not for the moon, whether they don't do so well on the moon. If I give them even more thrust power, maybe they'll be able to manage things a bit better. Because again, since you're not getting any resources from these, it doesn't really matter. Like the, the end player experience isn't going to be changed based on how much the thrusters cheat or not. Uh, the only difference is that I can use a smaller target rather than having to use a giant drone that might do more damage when it crashes.
Sweet. So we've got the waves working, which means I can now reduce their frequency to the desired frequency. Um, next up is adjusting the damage spawn and allowing the thing to spawn a lot of extra drones once you start damaging it. Uh, it shouldn't mean they come at you faster. It just means that they get to, they can get up to top speed and slow down um, as fast as faster. So they should be able to do a better job of stopping themselves from hitting the ground. That's what should change. Uh, yes, Laws, that's true. The difficulty to hit comes from both speed and size. However, on the other side of that is the larger drone does more damage to your base when it crashes into it. And to be frank about that, that does more damage than their bullets. So, I think... On balance, it's better to have smaller stuff that doesn't do as much damage. <laughs> Breaking news. After a motto made drones stronger, faster, and deadlier, Skynet became self-aware today. Come on, drone base. Send some drones so I can watch them. Oh, I should probably check to make sure this thing's actually spawned at a reasonable height. I'd say that's reasonable. As is this. Uh, yes, that is also why the um, drones have explodey bits. And why I increased their explosion radius. So that they would crash more. at one point why can't I see the other drones I can see a shadow from one but where is it oh there's another monarch it's so got two locusts a monarch and that's it that doesn't make sense there should be four odd well that's something to look into in the future Well, that was some unsuccessful collision avoidance. And some slightly, uh, for, I suspect for some people, some motion sickness inducing movement. Whoa, follow mode is not good. Orbit mode is not good. Let's just stick with free mode. Thank you. managed to survive its interaction with the other one. Okay. There's so many drones on the horizon. <laughs> Why are you so close? Oh, you lost your, you lost your guns in that crash. Uh, 
I see. Yes, the, <laughs> the drone did go boop. Okay. Spawn groups. Let's have it spawn in locusts. Um, but I probably want... No. Yes. Yes. Locusts. Oh no, I want to make a new spawn group for this. Hang on. So let's grab the locust spawn group. Because I like the locusts for this one. And we're going to go down to our swarms bit at the bottom. Uh, and pop it in here. So this one is going to be uh, swarm base defense spawn drones. So almost advanced drone. Which I might give a bit of a higher speed to. Oh, actually, no, that's not. Let's not. Let's do that. Then while we see the explosions happening in the background. Flammo! Um, then we go to our behavior and for trigger damage, our cooldown is, cooldown is currently one minute to two minutes. Let's reduce that to 30 seconds to two minutes. Uh, 30 seconds to a minute. And max actions, minus one. Then that's going to do... Trigger damage, actions, base support, call. No. Uh, it's going to... Uh, actually, yeah, you can do. Um, then it's going to do a separate spawner, which is going to be drone. Wait, no. Oh, hold up. Uh, control F. How do I do replace in this? Edit. Oh, control H. Find base lunar medium. Replace with swarm base lunar M. That should mean that we're not duplicating any of those subtypes anymore, which we were doing, which might have messed with some of the behaviors. Um, it's a good thing the voice interface is not a thing. I feel like Splitzy would be skirting meta disaster. He says spawn in locusts and the game spawns in Lucas who promptly upgrades all the drones. Yes. Uh, so dup, 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 dup. that's fine. Spawn base Luna M spawn a B. Launch spawn. Uh, so let's just. Steel spawn a B for a second. 
and we're going to do use relative spawn position true. And this is going to be tricky. Uh, how do I use this? And... Do, 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 do. Action spawn. Spawning type starts ready. Minimum cooldown, maximum cooldown, max spawns, spawn groups. Use relative spawn position. True. Uh, then we have relative spawn offset. Okay. So, um, <laughs> I'm assuming this needs to be done similarly to this, or is the format going to be different? Does it need to be done, like, including the squiggly brackets? It's going to be a fun thing to get right. Because <laughs> I don't know which way is X. So let's start with X one uh, x25 let's start with that and we'll slowly work our way through as we explode drones on it uh so i also need to change the trigger duration of the swarm so the swarm spawns should happen every five minutes to every uh 300 3.6 million is an hour so 72 7.2 million something like that uh cool cool so i need to determine which way is which way is x Actually, does Lucas specify in that? X, right, R, uh, Y, up, Z, forward. Ah, okay. I should be able to do that without messing around too much. Cool. Uh, so I think the... I think I've got the remote control block pointing to the what I think of as the back of the base. Which means that... Um, so if it's at the back of the base, we want to move it right onto probably five blocks, maybe six blocks. So six blocks would be 15 meters. Y is up. So we might want to move it 2.5 meters up. And Z will be backwards. So we want to move that probably negative... Let's try negative 20 to start off with. Let's see where this spawns when I shoot the base. Yes, it's just a jump to the X, then a step to the Y. Power up your DPS and raise your landing gear tight. Yep. Yeah. I think this is almost ready for me to, like, if I can get this spawning working, I should be able to go through and rip out the war mode from all the other behaviors. And then, uh, publish this so TFE and I can record with it this afternoon.
I need a weapon to make this easier. So I'll just clear out the other drones before we do anything. Uh, I'll also make myself untargetable to make this a bit easier. Okay, we've got a space wasp. Move that. the space wasp so we'll remove that go nice and close okay let's see where this drone spawns drone hello Hello? Why are you not spawned? Hmm? Hmm? Ah, I know why. I done stuffed up. Didn't rename the spawn group. Let's try that again. I think... I think I've got the distances about right. It's going to be a bit fiddly trying to adjust them to get them just right, but I think it's worth it. The whole being being in a position where you're attacking the base, um, and then you see a drone spawn on the runway is definitely cooler than having it just spawn overhead. Oops. What the? I think once they have the target, they keep targeting. Don't know where that ammo went. Alright. <laughs> In theory, this should work this time. <coughs> but no. Ah, why? Why are you not spotting the drone? Alright, let's measure it out properly. Okay, so we got that there. 
To the right would be one, two, how many blocks? So one, two, three, four blocks to the right is dead center. Then we go back. So four blocks to the right, which is 10. Let's go up by five. And then we want to go back by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine blocks. Which should be uh twenty two point five. I don't know if the spawner skips the collision checks, CFE. I assumed that uh, with the relative spawn thing it would, but maybe I need to, maybe I'll set this to. Oh, ignore safety checks. I should set that to true, because then we'll see where it actually is. So, safety checks, true. Um... And then positive spawn velocity. Uh, so we want this going zero right. Y. Yeah, we'll set it Y10 and Z minus 10. Okay, let's try this again. Is this way, I guess... Yeah. I forgot that I needed to ignore the safety checks because the safety checks should prevent it from spawning in that area normally because it's too close to another grid. Oh, and I think I know why we're not getting the full four drones. I think what I've done in the drone swarm is spawn them on top of each other. <laughs> so the first one should be at zero and zero. Then the next one, minus 30, minus 30. Then the next one at plus 30, plus 30. The next one at minus 30 Y. Minus 30 Y. And now they all should spawn differently. So we'll do that too. Uh, right. Let's spawn operation center. In fact, let's get rid of those. Let's give me a rifle, because I'm going to need to test this multiple times and it's annoying having to keep doing this spawning. Uh... Now let's get a base. And entity list, Firefly, Locust, remove. Uh, separate drones. Laws separate. Very separate things. Uh, we want to spawn drones so they stop colliding so much into the ground and other grids, so let's ignore safety checks and let them possibly collide on spawn. Yes. Uh, separate things. Are we... Arr. Okay. I think I need to simplify this a bit. And I also think I might have stuffed up somewhere. Right. Okay, so trigger damage. Damage type includes weapon, max actions minus one. It starts ready, so this should call it in. Base support call. Oh.
That'd be why. The action's not actually happening because it's not got the name matched. If mercs can crash into each other, then drones can too. <laughs> yep. Dragnon and his sub bomb. Oh, that was too funny. That was such a good bit of ridiculousness at the start of the Survival Unlikely finale. Ba uh, battle. Please be working. Oh, why? 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 Ah. I'm changing these things. So, trigger damage, action damage, action damage, use chat broadcast. Spawn encounter true. Spawner is this, which hopefully matches to my spawn group down there. It does. Oh. Uh, yeah, the drones definitely have the ability to be rival AI spawns. Because um, I'm calling in the basic ones, which all of the drones say rival AI spawns, because they all are all rival AI spawns. Um... Come on, why can't I get this to work? That appears to be everything that is necessary. I'm wondering if these are necessary. I'm assuming they are because we've got the colon in between, but... Or should there be a space here? There's not normally a space. I'm wondering if there's something wrong with these relative... offsets. And they're not quite right. Trying to come up with a reason why this wouldn't be doing what it's supposed to be doing. As far as I can tell, this spawn is correct. You spawn true, starts ready true. It's a rival AI spawn. Um, these three drones all have rival AI spawns. Um... So they all should work. So if we go back to our action. Start back at our trigger. So our trigger. Is this the same name that is in our trigger up the top here? Yes. So our trigger is started when the base spawns. Then our trigger is called when we damage the grid with either a rocket, a bullet, a drill, a weapon, or a grind. 
Um, there's no limit to the number of actions it can call. It starts ready, so we don't have to worry about any minimum cooldown time. And then it calls this action. This action does match to the action being called, which is a rival AI action, which calls the chat, which is working. So we know it's getting this far, because when I shoot the base, we're getting chat. We're just not getting the spawn. Um, spawn encounter true. The spawn are matched. So where am I going wrong? Okay, let's go back to removing some of these things. So let's see if we can get it to spawn without using the relative position. Because if that works, then it's something about the relative positions that's broken. If that doesn't work, then it's somewhere else. Which would be probably worse. I think that would be worse. <laughs> I don't want that to be a problem. Need a min-max spawn cooldown? I, I haven't for the others. Like the other spawns don't have cooldowns. The cooldown is on the trigger rather than the spawner. In brightest day or blackest night, no sense of direction shall be my plight. <laughs> Aww. Yep, I do. I do have the spawn groups set up because I'm using existing ones. The existing ones that caused these to spawn. Yep, locust spawns. Okay, so the issue is the relative offsets and stuff. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, at least I know where it's broken now. So something in this is wrong. Let's see what happens when I do this. Let's see if I get an error. It's a real pity I didn't get up to doing this while Lucas was still here. <laughs> uh. Well, I haven't gotten an error, so that's something. Let's get rid of the existing drones so we don't confuse things. Let's shoot the base. And we get nothing.
What am I doing wrong? New spawn true spawning type. This tag specifies the type of spawn that this spawn profile will request from module encounters. All position genetics are not used for tags other than custom spawn. Also, if using custom spawn, your spawn group conditions must include the rival AI spawn. True. Do I need to define that this is a custom spawn? Try. It was always custom, custom spawn. Uh, your spawn should, true should probably be first. Marvel A spawn, you spawn, custom spawn, starts ready. Let's cut this down to just the Firefly and see if there's something there. Let's bring back the squigglies. Because I get the impression that they are supposed to be there. From the way that Lucas has formatted this. Um, TFE, if you're still there, do you know if... Do you know of any mods that have these offsets? Or which of Lucas's mods have these offsets used? Because I could... If I can look at one of his examples, that might be helpful at seeing where I've gone wrong and why this isn't working. Why don't I just get a fruit fly? Fuel critical. Hive ships. Which hive ships? Um, was corrupt. Yeah. Is that... I wonder if that's in the current corrupt version. I wonder if he's got it on here. No. Uh... Yeah, because it doesn't seem like he's got all of his mods on here anyway. Air traffic, surface, occupation of the prior ones. Don't think orcs use any of it. Triggers broadfire, call reinforcements. Passive spawning carrier. Here we go. Starts ready, true, spawn. So he's got the cooldowns, so I'll put them in, but I don't think it should make any difference. Just compare it to what I got. So we'll get rid of that, because that's not in his. Rival A spawn, use spawn true, starts ready true, 
we'll put these in. I'll just leave that at five for now. Um, spawn groups. There's that drone, which I know isn't a rival AI spawn group. Use relative spawn position. True. Relative spawn offset. I've got the right format. And I've got the... I don't know why it's not working. Uh, Katiko, I spawned the drones in normally before and it works. So something's wrong with the relative spawn offset. Um, so I don't know why that's not working. Uh, yeah, so Mark, the, the actual values for X, Y, and Z will be different because they're relative to the position of the uh, remote control block on the grid. Uh, so it should be different. Because mine needs to be moved, shifted to the right in order to get it in that gap between the two bits. Uh, what I might do is smash these up to really high values and see if that changes anything. See if there is still, even though I've turned off the safety checks, still some issue that's blocking spawn. Because I, I wonder if... I wonder if that could be it. Uh, Apathy Gates, I despise Apple. So I think you can work out what my answer to that would be. <laughs> I despise Apple and all things Apple. Fuel critical. Uh, they were obnoxious to deal with when I worked in electronics retail. Uh, just Apple, the obnoxiously large electronics company. Okay. Shoot. We have a drone. Does the drone have a behavior? Yes. Just takes a little bit. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Um, so if it's... If it's now spawning... Now let's slowly bring it back and see where we can get it to spawn. So let's bring it down lower, bring it down to 100 meters. Uh, large grid blocks are 2.5 meters to each side. So... I should, in theory, have been able to spawn it where I wanted to do, but I guess it was still too close. Um, 2.5 meters makes a lot of sense as a cube size because a standard um, adult human in most games is usually like the defaults like 1.8 meters tall. So 2.5, a 2.5 meter size uh, cube is actually a really good size to work from because you can have spaces that don't feel ridiculously tight at a single block's height. 
Whereas Minecraft really requires three blocks in height for it to not feel really cramped. Because the character is also 1.8 meters tall. Or thereabouts. And so the roof feels too close to their head if it's only two blocks high. Whereas if their blocks were 1.25 meters, it'd be two and a half and it'd feel clear enough. Because that's a fairly common ceiling height for real world structures. Alright, where's this drone going to spawn? Helps if I hit. I have no drone. <sighs> Haven't got some chance things set here, do I? No. Why can it spawn at 500 meters altitude and it can't spawn at 100? Why? All right, let's try. So let's try getting this to zero and we'll just work on the why. Set that back to 500 and make sure it can work, because we know it works at 500. And still no drone. Okay. Um, I don't think the order matters. We can we can try that. Uh, once I get back in. We'll make sure it can spawn at 500. But yeah, I don't think the order matters for the ignore safety checks, but it's not a bad thought to test anyway. Fuel critical. Let's try again. And no spawn. Ah! Fresh to perfect, I mean, uh. <laughs> Why, 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 why? Do I still need altitude things? Like, because the one that I was comparing of Lucas's, this is a space spawn. So this spawns from a ship. Um, not from a base. So it's a bit different.
Why is that Min and Min? Shouldn't that be Min and Max? Did that break it? Hey, Bazakara. Um, uh, I'm not sure what is stopping the spawn. So I don't know whether it's terrain. I don't know whether it's the grid. I don't know whether it's something I wrote wrong. But we've managed to get normal spawns to spawn using the same code. So there's nothing wrong with the code that triggers the spawn. Um, as in, everything that wor everything works up until the point where the spawn is being triggered with relative position offsets. So it's something wrong with the relative position offsets as best as I can tell. Um, despite turning off the safeties, it's still not spawning when I th thought it should. And I'm trying to work out what conditions seem to be stopping it from doing what it's supposed to do. Um... It's my best summary of what's wrong at the moment. So there we go. We got the Firefly at 500 meters above it. I think this might have been breaking that test just before. So let's drop this down to 300 meters and try again. Because uh, that, hopefully, is what I need. So now, now I think I'm in a position where I can figure out what, whether it's a position issue as we get closer. Because we have a system that works. Fuel critical. All right, respawn. F8, let's run over to it. It's a pity this process takes a little bit of time. It'd be nice to be able to test it a bit quicker. But I have to spawn a new one every time, otherwise the behavior is not updated properly. No drone. No drone at 300 meters. Might just leave it a minute and see if I can do another one. All safety checks true. Do, 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 do. Yeah, you're not wrong, H2 Mako. The success does feel somewhat random, it doesn't feel consistent. Oh, I've been doing that naughty thing of changing multiple things at a time. Okay. So let's bring this back up to 500 and see if it does work again. It's not working now. Yep. I go back to a clean save every single time. Because otherwise the behavior doesn't get updated, so you have to go to a completely clean save. Uh, yeah, Tom Lee, it is possible to get more logging. I don't know how. Um, <laughs> unfortunately. So I'm frustratingly blind uh, with what I can do here. I might do the get grid behavior command if it doesn't work this time. See if there's some information I can glean from that. Okay. Drone spawns. Okay, so that's consistency. 
We it definitely spawns at 500 meters every time. Uh, so let's bring it back down to 200. And then... We'll do the get grid behavior. And see if that... Has any information about what went... Once I shoot it. Uh, honestly, I have no idea what happens if I do inherit NPC altitude, uh, considering the base doesn't have an altitude because it's in the voxel. Fuel critical. Okay, remove the things. Uh-huh. What's the get grid behavior? Dang it, I can't even remember that command. Oh, I'm useless. Uh, where might I have put that? I think I saved some of this stuff. Somewhere? Maybe? Maybe I didn't. Let's see if I can find it on Discord. Discord can't find it either. Delightful. You know what? That's at this point, I think I'm going to give up on this because basically the way it's working at the moment is pointless to me. Oh, info. That's the thing I missed. Thanks, TFE. Uh, trigger damage, action damage. So it spawns there. So it that seems fine. Um. TFE, if you have any idea, like, have you done any relative uh, spawn offsets stuff? Because it just it just seems to fail whenever it gets within five hundred meters of the parent grid or the ground. I'm not sure which is the issue, but it seems to fail anytime it's closer than five hundred meters. Um. And I, it seems like the, I could get a closer spawn using the regular spawn methods, not this. Uh, yeah, I can't, I can't work out. Ah, Lucas! Why can't I get my relative spawn offsets to work? Yeah. 
Okay, the ignore safety checks is obsolete. But basically, what I've discovered is... If I set the Y value to anything other than 500, the drone won't spawn. At all. There are tags you can put in the spawn group to help with that. So this is the spawn group I'm using. Who's the firefly, firefly, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Sweet. Thank you. Um, should I put this in a separate... Sp like, is this a risky tag to put in a spawn group that's going to do things normally? Or... Um, should I create a new spawn group for it? A special spawn group just for these drones to spawn from this base. Okay, might be a good idea if the existing group is more multi-purpose. Okay, so let's let's go grab the locust then, and we'll have a locust launch spawn group that's separate. Shall put straight after it. Locust. Base launch drone. Um, okay, then we can put in these. And then we move this back over to the other one. As the tag for that. And then we move this down to 100 meters and see. Hmm. Thank you, Lucas. I hope this works. Because <laughs> I, I. Honestly, don't know that I would have ever gotten to that point of working that out. I was, I was at the point where I was just gonna go. You know what? Now is not the time to sort this out. I will send, pop a message in his Discord and see if there's something I'm missing. So I certainly felt like I was missing something. Yeah, and you, uh, I mean, you do a pretty good job with your documentation in general, Lucas, so I don't think I'm going to be critical. All right, let's see. We have a drone. All right. Uh, so, relative spawn offset. Why? Let's bring that down to 5. We thought the X should be 10. The Z should be minus 22.5. And then we've got some velocities, which we might want to set up a bit higher. All right, let's try this.
And if this works, I'm going to have to resist the urge to forcibly spawn this <laughs> in for TFE and I to deal with. Oh, come on, please work, please work, please work. All right. Uh, delete the drones. Look at the base. And shoot. Huh. That wasn't as close as I thought it was going to be. Oh, that'd be why. Because that should have been five. Also, that appeared to be over this way. I'm going to try flipping... Yeah, the Z-axis is the one that I'm pretty sure is meant to be negative. Um. Hmm. Z-axis gets inverted sometimes, it's weird. Okay. Oh, is it something to do with, like, grid pivots and that nonsense that you can't fully control? Oh, well, once I, once I've got it at the right height, then I can start moving it and watching it explode the base until I get it in the right spot. Fuel critical. Let's get it at the right height first. Alright, three, two, one, blam. Okay, 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 okay. That's that's not bad. Um let's reload. And let's change this to let's change this to twenty-two. And we'll change that to twenty to fifty. And that to fifty. Oh yeah, the birdies are loud. Oh yeah, I know I'll need one more reload. I just wanted to do the reload so I didn't have to delete the bases again. <laughs> which probably takes longer than deleting the bases, which was a mistake. And I regret it. Stupid birds. <laughs> I need to, it's, I've been having to edit and edit them out of the recordings because they're so loud and they just, <sighs> I wish RTX voice could deal with them. But no, it can't. All right, let's see what happens. This could be close enough that it will crash. Hey, hey! Oh, yeah! Oh, 
Oh yeah. I kind of want to make it go slower so that it's more obvious that it comes from there. Um, so maybe I'll reduce the speed back down. Uh, maybe 30, because I do want it to move a little bit. Uh, maybe less Y. Um, and max spawns should be minus one, because I don't want to limit. Oh, yes. Thank you, Lucas. Oh, this is what I wanted. This is so cool. <sighs> I've been wanting to use this function that you implemented so long ago since you told me about it the first time. Um, but I just never had a, a situation where I could take advantage of it. Because I never built something big enough to be a carrier as such. But now I want to take one of Jackson's ships and actually turn it into a proper carrier that spawns stuff from its deck. The power's going to my head. Alright, let's try again. And blam! Is there anything that can be done about how long it takes the behaviour to initialise? Or is that just... Uh, it's just a thing. Um, I've always assumed it was just that that's how long it takes space engineers to initialize all the stuff. But is there anything I'm doing that makes that worse or anything like that? Yeah, it would be cool if the if I could set up the triggers so that it also opens that door. That would be very cool. Uh, I'm not sure that's really doable. Um, I suspect it'd be quite a complex chain of things to do. Um, yeah, a sensor block could be used to detect the drone, um, but. The drone's not there for very long, so the door would still be opening when the drone appears. I mean, yeah, the thing could spawn with the dr with the door open by default. Huh. Well. Aside from maybe in the future tinkering with that to be... to spawn with, um... to, like, mess with the doors. Uh, so this... this particular action should only happen... Uh... on you damaging the grid. So it'll only ever spawn one drone at a time. Which is intentional, because it looks like it can only print one at a time. But if you keep applying damage to this, uh, it'll keep pumping out new drones. But I might need to in decrease the time delay on how soon it can print off another drone. Because it's currently 30 to 60 seconds, which may actually be too long. 
be 15. Because how long do like how long does a battle actually last where you're doing damage to the grid? Although, wait a second, that's gonna be as you grind it down and you're trying to get through, you're gonna keep getting new drones spawning here. Leave it at 15 to 60. Uh, so 15 to 60, and then we've got the very long timer for the other thing. So that's the lunar base done. I just now have to duplicate this for atmospheric bases, and we're good. Yes, it did spawn another drone by the first drone shooting the base. Yes. Yeah, you must destroy, you must destroy the AI control block for the st spawns to stop. This is going to be quite a challenging target to take on. As intended. Uh, I've also been unintentionally cruel, I just realised, but all of the best loot is right next to the remote control block. So there's that. Oh, I'm so happy with this. We've now got waves of drones that can come from a base. We've got drones spawning from the launch area. Ah, feels so good. Um, yeah, I think I might do the, the get the Atmo base working in my own time. Probably, I might try and do that on the weekend. I think if I get a chance. Um, I really wanted to get this working so that it, the lunar stuff could at least work for our assertive acquisitions recording. Because I hope that we do trigger a spawn of one of these. Um, but I'm going to make this into the live version, I think. Oh, actually, maybe I should just do the Atmo bit, because I did start modifying the Atmo spawn. Uh, should be quicker to do now. So, we need not to have... No, we do need this file. Because I need to remember that. Okay. So, let's just go through it. I'm less likely to stuff it up if I'm doing it on stream than if I do it on my own. <laughs> so, we go... Atmospheric drones. No, these are prefabs. Behaviors. Atmo drone behavior small. Nope, that's not the file I want. Spawn groups. Spawn groups, drones, Atmo. So let's make a new drone. I think the Hornet is the one we want to spawn. So let's make a new Hornet group. So the Hornet drone needs to get the same treatment that the Locust got and have these tags put in. And also needs to be renamed in the same sort of style. Locust base launch drone. Hornet base launch drone. Uh, might give this one uber power as well. Uh, I'll I'll make it so other drones can spawn at some point, but it's it's not a priority. I want to get both bases working first. Uh, so that should be the drones done. So we can close the space drones. Let's open the installations. Installation spawns, groups, atmo medium. 
Drone operations medium, lunar operations medium. So that should be fine. Planetary Invasion requires Atmo True, yes, that's good for this one in particular. That was the thing I did wrong. Cool, so that's fine. Uh, I need to set the behavior type up now. Behaviors. Swarm-based lunar behavior. I don't have an Atmo swarm-based behavior. So base AI swarm base Atmo. Uh, my behavior. Do, 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 do. Let's open that up. Let's get rid of all these War and Peace ones. Get rid of those ones. Okay. Then we need to add in. Close that. Uh, close that. Don't save. So we got our lunar behavior. Actually, maybe I'll do this. Copy all that. Paste all that. Control H. Replace Luna with Atmo. Swarm base atmo medium behavior. Trigger procs far, trigger procs near. These should all line up because I've just straight up replaced one tag for another. Um, let's just make sure we've got our damage triggers and things working. And set up, and I'm going to have to check, I'm going to have to fix the spawn groups. Face support call, that's fine. Trigger damage is correct uh, trigger it's all right so spawner here we got to get the other media the old medium atmo open base atmo medium behavior let's go grab the spawn groups make my life easier Spawner A, Spawner B, Spawner C, apparently I've got a Spawner C, which I don't on this, so that's fine. No, I do. Okay, so this needs to change to be this Hornet. <laughs> yeah, I like leaving the drones just trying to kill me in the background. It does add some annoyances, but um, I kind of like it. Adds some... Adds something going on. Uh... Spawn support director, Atmo defense post one. Ah, we need a new base swarm. So that's in the drone spawn groups. Let's open up the space. I think I've already got Atmo open. Spawn group space. Focused. That was all the way down, all the, way down the bottom, wasn't it? No. Yes. Uh, 
let's copy that and go into drones atmo now we just got to replace each of the types in this with Atmo 4. I'm going to need to change the other one at some point because it's currently set to a generic name rather than a specific, which it shouldn't have been. So on base Atmo behavior, this will spawn Atmo 4. And now we just need to pick four drones. There are a bunch of drones to randomize through here. So we got Wasp. Put it in a couple of them. Haunted on a couple of them. In fact, I'm going to put Hornet on all of the ones that I know are space drones so that I don't accidentally leave any space drones and have some ion powered drones spawning in Atmo. Because that would be annoying. At least this way. I can just replace those Hornets gradually with other drone types from my Atmo catalogue. Some Mark II mosquitoes. Ah, uh, no, I've never accepted drones. Drone submissions. They've always been my custom builds. I haven't even gotten through the cargo ships. I can't go around accepting more other things. <laughs> wasp, hornet, mosquito. Wasp, hornet, mosquito, mosquito. Sure, that'll work. Right. So... Now we need to make sure... So the spawn group should be good. We've got a spawn for Atmo of a swarm. Need to make sure that the behavior name matches up. the base spawn group it does so let's close that because I'm having trouble keeping track of what files I'm working on um, the behavior matches to the spawn group the spawn group calls this calls spawns of things that I've already I'm already sure I've got correct although these say AI that's not right. That's not right at all. I'm just going to duplicate those. Um, Hornet base launch drone, that should be all the same. All right, I'm going to give it a crack. It's gotten to that point. Let's just see if it works. If it works. I think I've I think I've done everything. Uh no, the drones cannot run out of ammunition. At all. See you, Farnish. They will shoot forever. Please be the last load I need to do today. That'd be really nice. Fuel critical. <laughs> do they shoot the whole bullet? Oh dear. Let's check and see if this works. Yep. Okay. 
Spawn is eligible. Very much spawns in the ground. Going to need to fix that. Let's see what happens when I shoot this. Hey, the hornet takes out a tree. <laughs> cool. Alright. Uh, so far, so good. Installation spawn group. Spawn group. Atmo medium. Let's give it another 10 meters. And then... Uh, I also want to change the frequency of this. I want to make this happen quickly. Let's get rid of two zeros on each one. Oh my god, Splitzy is automating the tree destruction. Hmm. I'm getting hungry for lunch. I need some food. Hopefully I can get this working quickly so I can eat. I feel really good about this. I was I was worried that this was going to take me a lot longer to do. Um, but it's actually come together relatively quickly. Um, we should be seeing a drone swarm spawn soon. Everything's working. Anywhere between 3 and 72 seconds. Hello. Oh, there we go. Hornet. Hornet. Mosquito. Wasp. Right. So we know that part of it works. Alright, and it's spawned high enough out of the ground this time. And blammo. We have a hornet. Yes! It works. Okay. I'm happy with that as a test for now. Uh, we are going to load a game. It's going to be the Atmo cargo ship save to fix up a bug that apparently I did in a build. Um, Atmo ships. And I need to fix that cooldown so that it doesn't happen all the time. So we deleted two zeros from each. There we go. Ah, uh, yeah, it spawns more drones with more shots, um, but it will only do that at a specified interval. So I won't just constantly do it if you just repeatedly shoot. Uh, it's it'll. It has a chance, it becomes able to spawn new drones anywhere between 15 and 90 seconds after the first one it spawns. So the Paschetti Cruiser 
apparently doesn't have a gyro. And that is true. It does not. I'm going to stick a gyro on this thing. like anywhere in here will be sufficient. Alright, so then we copy this twice. Then we get the fancy thrusters. sci-fi thrusters. Wait. Did I just put regular thrusters next to sci-fi? No. These are mixed. Interesting. Alright. Change the grid name. Dash AT1. Nope, not Dutch AT exclamation so apparently I missed out on putting a gyroscope on this so I have to replace all three versions of its blueprint because uh, we have special thrusters on some of the blueprints and so I'm just trying to do it nice and quick so then we can upload and you guys can know that this stuff is live immediately So we go into our prefabs, we go into our atmospheric cargo ships, and we find the spaghetti. And we delete all these. And we put these in instead. And we make sure that that matches the names that are in the spawn group. That's in the spawn group file. Uh, yep, that's correct. Um, and someone was saying maybe the Golden Spear has the same problem. No, it has a gyro. So it's fine. Um, cool. Uh... Why does that have a strike through through it? Deleted. What? Why is that deleted? Get rid of the copy one, because apparently that was weird. I don't know how that happened. Uh, I was thinking of something. That's what I was thinking of. So let's close all this. I shouldn't need any of these open now. Okay, so the last thing I need to fix is removing the war and peace mode from the other bases. So, behaviors, AI, base atmo, easy behavior. I don't think Civ has it. No, it doesn't. Um, medium, high. 
Uh, lunar base, easy, medium. So we should be able to now remove these. Uh, and this. That should, all, that should be all that's needed to remove from this because those are all in another file, I think. Oh, no, they're not. Get rid of that. Uh, once I've got it somewhat more stable, I will see what can be done with moving it to uh, mod.i, like making it possible to run on a cross-platform enabled server. Because this can't be run on Xbox as is. Uh, the the loot, Lucas, the loot. And I thought I thought your stuff required crossplay enabled MES requires crossplay enabled server as well. As opposed to just loading up on someone's local game. Or has that changed too? Yeah. Hey. I'm really hoping I'm not breaking something here. But I really want these things to stop spamming their um commands. Yeah, let's go back up the top. Fix this up. Yeah, it's a bit... The Xbox thing's a bit of a difficult one for me to test as well because I don't really have an easy way to set up my Xbox. Um, load game. Let's load the test. One last time. Hopefully. Then I can upload. Yeah, it's it's a hard thing to like get other people to test as it were. Uh, but my plan was to just remove the loot part from ACS and have two two versions, one that's crossplay enabled and one that's not. Cuz I assumed that a lot of what um Graz had done for the loot would was client side and therefore not capable to run on Xbox. Uh... Keep doing this today. Okay, that looks good to me. Let's spawn a spaghetti cruiser since that's the thing I fixed. All right, where's my paschetti?
Uh, the data pads shouldn't be an issue. It'll just be the... Like, the loot spawning mechanics, it's the... It's the lootable thrusters that wouldn't happen. Yeah, Gruz, that's true. Maybe... I mean, if I was putting all the effort in, I would probably just do a souped up replacement large thruster um, and Xbox players only miss out on the small grid versions well it's moving so it's behavior is loading so that's fine But yeah, it's it's not a simple process to get the ACS mod working on Xbox. Uh, so it'd, it'd require me spending a fair bit of dedicated time doing it. It's something I would like to do because I totally understand why people would want it on there. But it it's not a simple task. Behaviors are working apparently here too. Got a drone coming in. Got more drones coming in. Cool. I'm happy with that. Let's publish it. So anyone using the mod, that's what's being changed today. Uh, ACS, test, edit settings, mods. Uh, publish, yes. Uh, the same has been completed successfully. Let's have a look. Let's write a little comment. Uh, installation behavior has been updated. The war peace mode has been removed as it wasn't functioning as intended. And a new dangerous base has been added. The threat from this base is real and it should be dealt with as soon as possible. This is probably really tiny for you guys to read because it's tiny even for me. If you see a drone operations base, you might be in trouble. Also fixed the spaghetti. Cool. Um, so that's updated. You guys can now come across that giant base that I built today and get attacked by horrible drones in swarms of four from anywhere between every three minutes to every three hours. Two hours. Three hours? Two hours. I think it's two hours. Three minutes. Yeah. A few minutes to two hours. So they'll periodically send nasties after you and they will be very nasty when you go in and attack them. Uh, I'm going to up their behavior difficulty over time, adjust it, tweak it, etc. But for now, at least it works. So yeah, I will be back for, uh, I'll be back with Capac tonight over on his Twitch channel for some more Across the Obelisk. Uh, and 
Otherwise, we'll be back on Saturday with some more scavenger hunt. So this is all that and plenty more to come. And I will see you then. Thanks for helping me out, everybody.